What's happening, weirdos? This is the incredible Taryn Killam, who was one of my all-time favorite SNL cast members, and now he's one of my all-time favorite You Made It Weird guests. This is a Did We Just Become Best Friends episode, and I'm so glad you guys are here. Couple things to mention up top. I'm currently on the road. If you want to see me, go to PeteHolmes.com. Lots of new tour dates. This new hour is so fun. Thank you to all the weirdos that have been coming out. PeteHolmes.com for all the tour dates. New York, uh, what else? Denver, Salt Lake City. These are all coming up. Go to Pete Holmes and more. PeteHolmes.com. You get it. Also, if you'd like to support the show, why not try a Pete's Pick? We only do ads for things I actually use and I actually love. And I'm so excited to introduce a new Pete's Pick. Pete's Pick, which is Bird Dogs. This episode is brought to us by my new favorite, best looking, best feeling shorts I've ever owned, Bird Dogs. I'll show them. These are my Bird Dogs. I was just, for those of you in the uh, watching the video, I was just swimming. I, I've never been a big shorts guy. I don't like swim trunks, even though I love swimming. But bird dogs are literally here to change all of that, especially now that it's summer. I love liberating my legs and getting in water as often as I can. And now thanks to my bedogs, bedogs, I, I can do so feeling totally comfortable and looking and feeling really, really good. Bird dogs make you look good. They have stretch khaki shorts that are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and your leg, giving you a truly sculpted look, basically doing the same thing Lululemon does. But let's be honest, it's a plus that it is not Lululemon and it looks way better. They're not stiff. It's not restricting cotton. Bird Dogs have fixed this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches to get you a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. And Bird Dog uses anti-stink, anti-sweat. It's sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. These trunks that I'm wearing right now are not only fit great and look great, but they dry really quickly and they look incredible in and out of the water. So, Go to birddogs.com slash weird and you will get a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash weird. Support the show. Get some awesome shorts or some swim trunks and get a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. It's also brought to us by our friends at Living Libations. You guys know I'm mindful of what I put in my body. But years ago, I realized I wasn't being very careful about what I put on my body, which, of course, these things end up in your body. I was buying shaving cream. You guys know neon blue shaving goo isn't good for your body. These are filled with chemicals linked to disease and toxicity levels never intended for humans. And I realized I want to eat food where I recognize the ingredients and I want my skin care to be the same. Enter living libations. Not only the best and deep down most effective skin care, hair care, eye care, teeth, and baby products I've ever found. I'm sweating because I just got out of the pool. But also the most natural, made exclusively with plants and oils and extracts that not only will you recognize, but you'll be able to easily pronounce. Now that it's summer, having a natural zinc-based sunblock for Leela, our daughter, is so important. And so many of them, I've done my research, that claim to be natural just are not. But Living Libations Love the Sun Sunblock not only works great, lasts long on your body and lasts long in the bottle, but also we can feel great about putting it on ourselves and on our daughter all summer long. So this is a great way to support the show. Get something small, get something big, whatever you want to replace, something in your medicine cabinet, something in your hair care, skin, face, body, eyes, teeth, even babies. Living Libations has a premium, natural, and wonderful product to replace the random chemical nightmare they sell at 7-Eleven. 15% off. Go to livinglibations.com slash weird. 15% off and show your support of the show. That's livinglibations.com slash weird. All right, everybody. Enjoy Tear and Kill em. It's so fun. Get into it. Yeah, yeah, be close. Be close, be close, be close. Oh, shoe friends. Press them. Press them to me. Look at this. Nice big feet. <laughs> Good feet. <laughs> Do you remember Never Ending Story of the Rock Eater? Of course. Strong hands. Did he say big feet too? No, but he should have. I tried to rewatch the Never Ending Story, which, by the way, what a time to be alive, to be a stand up comedian when the movie The Never Ending Story came out. Everybody just got a bit. 
Yeah, oh, sure. It was over after two hours. Oh, yeah. It was right there. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Liar. Yeah. 90 minute runtime. False. <laughs> oh, but I mean, there was a time that uh -huh. that was a fresh and hot and exciting take. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I was I, I very young team. when it came out. Um, yeah, no, it, it should have <laughs> What do you think? It should have been still going. Because it's never ending. <laughs> right. But I tried to rewatch it in that rock month. It opens in like a, in a valley, like a dark valley. I don't know that I remember it well this enough. Is... I remember the kid and being like, where is he? He's in an attic. He's at the school in an attic oh. with skeletons. When he's reading the book. Yeah. He's in a, a bookstore. The bookstore, I remember, the bullies, and he avoids the bullies. Yes. Or, or not at first. At first, the bullies get him. Isn't it funny that, have you ever thought about this? I was just thinking about this the other day, that like the movies coming out now mm. were actually, are actually based on the childhood of the people writing them. Yeah. So when we saw the bullies in uh, The NeverEnding Story, which came yes. out in the 80s, yes. it's actually based on the bullies. Of the late of 50s, like, early 60s. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I remember being like, yeah. this isn't in line with the bullying that I experienced. It's not mm. like baseball cards stuck in the spoke of the yeah, bike, right. chasing me, throwing rocks and stuff. No. It was more psychological. It was yes. a lot more like- It the, was the, who's watching, what can I get away with? Yes, it was and more- And then posturing. Like yes. there was a guy who would find out what girl I had a crush on and then ask her out. That's that's eighties bullying. That's eighties bullying, folks. <laughs> that's why. And that's why, like Iron Man and Captain America, are dealing with that kind of stuff now. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> right. Right. But it's writing never. Those movies. It's almost never right on the money. Yeah. Like because no, you sure. and I are now writing things and we're basing it on eighties bullying. Exactly. But people in twenty twenty three are like, that's not what bullying looks yeah, like. Yeah, now yeah. it's like a comment on my Instagram yeah. post or whatever. There I'm like, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Matt Morano called you the F word and I don't mean fuck. Yes. No, I know. I know which one you mean. <laughs> I I love saying fuck. I hate saying the other one. Same. Unless it's for pure shock. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just like, I, unless it's just for this total is interesting. shock. I was told a story Friday night that basically the punchline or is the that? end of it is that word. Yeah. And it still got under my skin. And it was it was not like they're telling it as a joke. It was right. the retelling of a, of a very oh. famous celebrity encounter. Tell me the story. You don't- It's well, not mine. I'm it, appropriating the story. Okay. We're also All right. using a, okay. you're going to say the word. So it's also, I'm just I kidding. won't. That's where kidding. I'll draw the line. Uh, I can tell. When, when you say the word, point to me and I'll make the sound of a bike horn. This is great. <laughs> okay. This is great. <laughs> Apparently, Wait, Mark you... Ruffalo's Ooh, first big good theater. Chester. Yeah. Got great good Chester. everything. Great everything. Good, Looks like good political advocate. Good political advocate. Uh, great Hulk. Great Hulk. Did a role that no one else could do. Yeah. Sorry, Ed. Oh, dang. Sorry. You couldn't do it. Eric Bana. Mean, what's that? Eric Bana. Eric Bana couldn't yeah. do it. Okay. I like the Eric Bana one a lot. I like that Ang Lee one. I, uh, when I say they couldn't do it. Oh. <laughs> I'm holding space for you. And I felt that. That's why I was so delighted. You're such an active listener. I'm already being healed of my 80s bullying good. because yes, of this yes, conversation. Good, good, yes. And I really uh -huh. want to step up my game so you feel how good I feel. Because <laughs> yeah. you just did. You anticipated a feeling. That yeah. was so beautiful. Oh, they should yeah. study that oh, in communications you. All right, courses. <laughs> all I was saying was Norton, Banna, all those guys didn't have the tech. The technology wasn't there. Ruffalo is the best Hulk, but the technology was the best to make the Hulk not a joke. Yeah. When Ed Norton turned into a CGI nightmare. Yeah. I mean, that's not his fault. That's the thing. I don't know that I fully agree. I think if you go back and <sighs> look at... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just yes, and you, just now I've fun. betrayed the, the, the gentle support you thought you no, had. No, you, it was you, only for betrayal. Can I say something? But an honest betrayal. Keep telling me. Keep telling me. Keep telling me. It does look better than I remember. I th uh, that Ang Lee was the first to capture the the uh, the eyes the of, of the emotion and like yeah Ang Lee and it's and it's is it Nick Nolte is the dad and that's like a weird storyline but that's Hulk leaping through the desert swinging tanks by the thing like that's fun that's a Hulk where you go like oh yeah he's dangerous and he can do anything I want to watch that now I didn't can mind I, it the Hulk I? dogs was like a big criticism. But I like the emotion. Of oh, it. there were Hulk dogs in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hulk dogs sounds like 
Yeah. You know what I'm wary of? Single sentences that explain why Everything. something sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We That's should have sentences. Hulk dogs. Hulk dogs. one <laughs> sentence. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, look out for that. That's that's Hulk 3. Th- Hulk dogs come out in Hulk 3, not Hulk. Uh, okay. Hulk is the one I should watch? That's what that one is, right? Ang Lee? Hulk. 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 Ang Lee. I like it. Katie's the googling first, it. The first Kate's googling it. To, that, to my memory of using comic panels in its visuals, like oh. real, it was a real love letter to the source material and a real cinematic heightening. Can I, I thought, okay, can, I'm I, gonna, I am fine to be wrong to the masses, but well, speaking of that, okay, I'm going to be vulnerable, but yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. Uh, meaning I'm comfortable in my vulnerability here. Yes. I just did something that is something that comedians do and do to good effect, meaning Mm -hmm. it makes people laugh and it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But I also am embarrassed because when I said that, I don't really remember if it looked good or not. I was just sort of going off of a- I see, that's okay. I know that inkling, yeah. Right? Yeah. And in my defense, I'm just trying to get the- yeah, yeah, yeah. Going, ball rolling. Ball rolling. Hey, it looked like the, shit, right? Oh, but when you're rolling. When you, no, that doesn't work with that. <laughs> doesn't work with that. <laughs> oh, what a terrible thing we've given the world. <laughs> he called me a bike horn. What does me. that mean? <laughs> Yikes. Um, but, but I grew up in Boston in the 80s, and I feel mm-hmm. like I can't say if it was just that area, but it was certainly that area. Yeah. There's a lot of like that sucks without any ability to uh, back, back it up, up with why it sucks. Yeah. And I'm embarrassed that a little of it still you remains shouldn't. in you my You shouldn't be because I know, I know exactly what you're saying, but I do th- I mean, we don't know each other well. No. We've met in person only once before. Do you remember Comic-Con. where? You remember where? Great. You know why? Because we love that stuff so much. We love that stuff, but and you know what I remember? Kumail and hang? Emily. Yes, Kumail and Emily. Yeah. What? That's what I remember. I thought that I was trying to guess the right why, but I didn't. Oh, I remember uh, that you did Mulaney for me. Oh. And I <laughs> still. Oh, it was a kind of at a time, yeah. uh, everybody says this, but it was at a time before everybody was doing Mulaney or it was less popular Sh- to do Mulaney. Sure. And yeah. your Mulaney specifically was. Um. Ha. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's funny. That's what I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just took me. I remember where we were standing because oh, I wow. love impressions so much. They're like mm. little events <laughs> yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That like that is what I remember. I remember being very happy that day. Yeah, and walking around and seeing like the Such new bat suit. Yeah, 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 It was like when the Affleck bat suit was coming out. Yes, you right. That? I do remember, and I, I yeah, liked it. Tell I liked me, the look of it. Me no, too. I just liked the look See, of it. Boston Pete wants to be like, and it looks stupid. Yeah, yeah, no. It actually, it looked great. Stitching, like, okay, cool. And Affleck, who better to play Bruce Wayne? You know what I mean? I like him as B Man too. I, I no, there's nothing. There no, was no, no newness for me. No. But just, that's just for me. No, you know, no. <laughs> that's just for me but billionaire playboy different girl thing i'm like this guy knows that lifestyle this is gonna be cool interesting and then and then, his, and then his bruce I... was a little more sullen than i want like like i like well yeah. i feel like that's back tattoo affleck i'm not tr- you're sure. talking to an affleck aficionado okay great i love affleck awesome so boston. i'm not i know yeah but actually it's very in vogue a lot of people i know in boston like to tease okay affleck. so when i say it's back tattoo affleck yeah i just mean it he is a little uh, despondent. Okay. He has a weight to him. You ever talk here? Uh-huh. T- by the way, we don't have to talk about this much longer, Should, but no, I think no. that's what you're picking up in his, in his Wayne. Mm. And let me show all my cards. When I say I like his Batman, what do I mean? I just like the way he looked in the suit. He's like, sure. He, I his, agree. Yeah. his shoulders are incredibly broad. Yes. Let's just He's call bulky. it He's what just, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's bulky. He's bulky yeah. Batman. But what do I like about Bale's Batman? Uh, uh, Go ahead. Not much. <laughs> like a turning head, no. <laughs> a turning head was like the cell of that. Like Batman Begins is just all Nolan of just like he's in the shadows, he's scary, he can rip a guy. Like yeah. it was the first time that it wasn't a cartoon where yeah. suddenly a guy goes up, right? Yes, like that's right. I, and I should say, I should. <laughs> this is what the whole hour plus or whatever is going to be. It's, I it's can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm such a hardcore Keaton Batman. Like you, well, like you will not get a flaw out of me from that whole thing. And it him being back in the Flash and the suit. I'm like, yeah, no, the suit's never been better than that. But I, except for the complete inability to turn his head. I don't mind that. Fun, I don't mind that. Fun fact, you know that. You know what I mean? I don't mind I that. I was just going to say. Oh, funny. Yeah, you that knew. moment. Yeah, we're yeah, yeah. about the same age. 
Because yeah. when Batman came out, I saw it 12 times in the theaters at a time I when seeing a movie in the theaters yes. was like insane. Yes. Yeah, to go yeah, twice yeah, 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 was yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, you You've turn. seen it. Yeah, yeah. The only reason yeah. you see a movie is to like brag that you've seen it. Totally. I have 1250 or yes. whatever it is. Yeah. And I, I, I had the book. Did, there was a book that came out I with had it that had pictures so many of the things. props. I had so many things. I had, yeah. I had, I put a yellow sticky post it at the video store on the cardboard cutout of the Batman <gasps> when the VHS tape was coming. And I had that for a, a few years. Wait, tell in my me what that room. means. Um, Did you live VHS in a town is coming where people out. honored a sticky yeah. post-it? This yeah. is mine? Yeah. You Wait, put your you name. work there? No. No. I just said I want I'm, this. I'm eight or nine years old when it comes out on VHS. And you put I'm a little. sticky post-it on yeah, it and you it, said, I want we this. Went, yes, yeah. What's to stop me from removing that and putting my sticky post it? I mean, we got to reach out to Bear City Video because <laughs> they're in Big Bear. In Big Bear. I love that you. I would. I'm seeing a log cabin video store, and I'm seeing an honoring of the post it. Yeah, system. the honoring of the post it was great, and a and a and a soft sir like a like a frozen yogurt with with butterfinger crumbles Shut on top. Shut the fuck you up. You know what I mean? So the good. '90s was sucking our d's with that <sighs> shit. God, so good with crunchy candy and soft serve ice cream. Yes. I remember the first time I had that. I also my my ex wife is from Maine. Okay, and I remember she had like a very Big Bear esque uh, video store in her town. Is yes. there anything better that the warm, like what's that word, the Norwegian word for when you create warmth? Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. It's like an art. Do you know it? It doesn't matter. Hung, hung, hungar, hung, hunger. Hung, hunger. <laughs> hunger. Hunger games hunger is just people trying. Hunger. <laughs> that you Norwegian are, culture. I hope um, everybody gets to hang out with you once <laughs> in their life because that is just so fun. That was just so good. What a treat you are. Anyway, the the snowed in somehow every video store. Uh -huh. Whenever you went in, whatever the weather is outside, it's now you're now snowed in that video store. It's mm. like it's quiet and pay, even a blockbuster. Sure. Meaning even the corporate you're talking of it you're talking the process it. of like you got in the car you got there you scrape the thing and then you do the this yes, outside and then yes, you come in and boom, then you're in and now you're safe and they're playing and, speed and of on course the, they behind are, the counter and you haven't seen it yeah, you're trying not yeah, to yeah, look blah, 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 blah. and that, that's what you want to get actually now i know it was cans <laughs> uh cans ma'am no, it I was know. cans it's cans uh keanu what's your favorite film festival cans <laughs> it was cans ma'am <laughs> By the way, just watch John Wick for. Okay. They now know that his. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna try it. Uh, the John Wick. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. I sure do. Yeah. 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 That. There's a little was you know? that gave yeah. me. That was an event. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> John Wick, yeah. John Wick, yeah. I, it does have a bounce. There's I a bounce. hear good stuff. I hear good stuff about four. I had to tap out after three. I've reached the age where I'm like, it's over. Guns, I can't do it. I will say, oh, no, okay. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. When they're picking an assault rifle that is like ripped from the headlines, yeah. and you're just like, yikes. I'm with you. I understand. And, 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 I, and I like want to put my hypocrisy out there because there is no. I can separate movie it. scene that revs me up more than in commando when yeah. he breaks into that gun store and then opens a secret wall yeah. and he's grabbing all the thing. And I'm like, I, like I was, I was making guns out of wood. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just where we are in history and where I more specifically where I am in my life in John wick three, he's like pulling heads to the side to get it in there. And yeah, I'm just yeah, like, yeah. Uh, no, Oh, you didn't like I that. I can't, I can't. I actually, it makes me so sad. I because of the implications world. of world yeah. of world implications yeah. of world is implications is, of world is the That's name of my a Norwegian state. No, it's my class. Oh. Welcome to implications of world. <laughs> it also sounds like something you'd see on a pen in Japan. It just says implications of world. Of yeah, world. Yeah, 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 it's so much more beautiful in Japanese. <laughs> It's one symbol. It's one symbol. It's all. perfect. It literally like it'll make it, you cry. It'll make you tear up. Yeah, even if you, you don't up. know what it means. I'm with you, but like, uh, like I get that, and I can still. I'm not saying this out of any defense. I'm saying it out of. It's an interesting subject. Why can I be so against uh, guns and and gun violence and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. 
when I can enjoy that. And I'm like, the, this is the language of, of our unconscious. Like, sure. like your, your dreams. And, Tapping and into the primal side of things, something. you think. Yeah. Well, you said it yourself. I forget where I saw this, but um, I don't know. I was watching something just about raising boys. We both have daughters. Mm -hmm. I have a daughter and you have two girls. And, and by the way, Leela's fierce and loves to fight and wrestle. So like, yeah. I understand broad strokes, gender normative conversation alert. Yes. But a lot of boys, even if their their parents are like, we've never let them watch a single frame of television. You give them a long stick, yes. they start killing you with it. Yes. And, and by the way, I don't think that's that far from you give me sauerkraut. I start eating it because I'm from Lithuania. You know, there's like a genetic... <laughs> Things Sounds going on. far away from it's it. It's pretty far <laughs> until you taste how spicy <laughs> this crowd is. It's, it's like a rifle. Me. So um, when I watch that, I, I can. It's another art. You separating do separate the art and the artist, or separating the art and the implications of violence. Yeah, yeah. Kind yeah, of in a I'm Kill Bill sort of way, I guess. I, I hear, I hear you. Like, like Kill Bill again. Yeah, they're like it's so fantastical. There's something about it was specific to John Wick. Where they're like, we've done our research on guns and ammo. I know, I know what you mean. It's that thing, and the way he reloads, and he's really and, and, there's and the, a lot of. But it's just like the, um, yeah, I don't know what it is. I I've also entered, I've entered into, and this is like within the last two weeks, I was like, oh no, um, I've entered into my like studying and being overwhelmed by World War II phase of my life. How old are you? Forty one. Right on track. <laughs> <laughs> it's seven. I, 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 That's what happens. It, I'm just like Show the lives, me a slow reload. the lives, yeah, yeah, yeah. the lives, the and why. And yeah. I'm I'm just like, and every old man that I was like, oh, you're reading a book about World War II, are you? I'm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have to go at and you're and be like, um, I'm sorry, Mister Mister Cavalieri, wh where'd you get that book? <laughs> That leather bound book. <laughs> yes. And you read it like the never ending oh, story God. in the top it's part still of a bookshop. It is. I mean, that was the never ending story. I know, I know what you mean. I, I had a sketch idea where I wanted, but I, the re, I don't know why I don't do it. Uh, meaning I'll say it. I don't even care if someone else does it, but mm. it was um, a henchman backstory, henchman obituary. Okay. So you take a scene from John Wick, yes. and every time he shoots somebody, <laughs> it freezes. Great. Uh, plays I will remember you. So fun. But the, what would actually make it funny is you have to get very specific. You'd, you'd be like, Taron Killam was like, he shoots you. Taron yeah, Killam yeah. was raised in Big Bear, California, yeah, 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 and yeah. had a deep, deep love, love of the serve first, and, yeah, 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 soft yeah. serve with crunchy candy and <laughs> yes. the first Batman. Yeah. He even put a post-it on a cardboard cutout of Batman. You know what I mean? And then it yes. resumes and he shoots another one. Yes. That. So I'll say that that's like my attempt at reconciling how. Precious is it's any so life, silly and how evil it. doesn't exist. Mental illness exists. Right. Unmet needs, like like yeah. disturb, like there, like nobody's a henchman. Right. Nobody's right. a henchman. Like totally. The movie could have been about that guy. I joined this great new yeah. outfit, and they told me to go into the <laughs> yeah. into the concierge yeah, uh, yeah, lounge yeah. and shoot this bad guy. Sure. And he shot me. Yeah, yeah, so fast. <laughs> but also out the other side of my face, when I'm feeling, this is in defense of those things uh, that are you know, whatever, very black and white. Mm -hmm. When I'm dealing with issues and they might even be like deep psychological or even spiritual issues where I'm afraid, mm -hmm. sometimes watching somebody who's just facing fears, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like John Wick is just not afraid Yeah, and he does it yeah. and he's tired yes. and he keeps falling and he keeps getting broken. Ethan Hunt, I think the Mission Possible movies are about the uh, insatiable zest of life. Like Ethan mm. Hunt is life. Mm. Life is an impossible mission, but he won't stop. Yes. Even though they keep saying it ends, you're going to die. I'm going to die. You're going to die. It's impossible. Yes. You keep going, get yeah. on the motorcycle, get yes. the knife, cut the thing, go in. Your boys are underneath in the boat. Yes. And we love watching that because life is so fucking heavy and so frightening. Uh -huh. Sometimes you just want to see something reduced to the most, bit, not even primary colors, just black and white, good and bad, dead and alive, banging, banging dead. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, but I feel like this is tr like transitioned into action movies in general. And that's not me. Like a Mission Impossible I'll do yep. because Mission Impossible for me is is so set piece focused and almost like Rube, I, I get like it. Rube Goldberg puzzly, like this must have happened here. Heisty yes, yes, do this. Yes. The, the, the wow is the motorcycle in the mountain. Yes. Not the 40 guys shot in a neck. Yeah, I agree. So it's very John wick specific. I, 
we is it possible but after that after your we're thing I'm like agreeing? I might need to see it. <laughs> you can also watch Man on Wire. Like there's certain yeah. docs that make me go like don't be afraid. That's what it is. Man on Wire it's is love, yes. love and fear, right? Yes. And there's certain art, certain art that makes me more afraid. Yes. I like I love The Sopranos, but I tried to rewatch it during the lockdown, and I was like, this is making me more, more afraid. afraid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not. I I wouldn't say a bad thing about it, other than yeah. it makes me a little more distrustful of my neighbor. Yes. John Wick is so cartoonish that it doesn't make me go like, oh, I'm going to see Taron today. I hope he's not dangerous. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But The Sopranos might. It might make me be like, what if he's unstable? <laughs> like, yeah, just yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but that's interesting. I'm trying. I'm like in. I'm going like, what are the movies that like make you less boost? afraid? Or yeah, and afraid. I don't know. I like. I don't know that the absence of fear is possible because there's, you know, I'm sure it was in Mission Impossible or John Wick is like, yeah. you know, courage isn't not being afraid. It's being afraid and, and doing it anyway. Forward, you yeah, know? exactly. Um, but just in terms of like low and like go like, no, it's okay, you know. Yeah. And you said Man on a Wire. And Man I, on and a Wire I thought, is one of And them. that, I was like, now, yeah, I totally, that resonates, that understands. What? And King of Kong Fistful of Quarters does it for me. Can you hit it? Hit it? At, at, yes, I can. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Fuck. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say kick it. I uh, asked me how many times, Taryn. Um, you've Taren. seen it, yeah. Taryn, I'm here. I'm listening. I could. I can't tell you how many times I've seen it because I'd be deeply embarrassed. Oh, it's. I have an unnatural. I'll be the first to admit. Yes. Almost compulsive obsession with King of Con. Fisk full of quarters, yeah. and I'll even watch some of the offshoots. You ever see some of the copycat docs? No, no. Tell me though, because I it, the, obsessive. It's uh, a little obsessive. bit of a waste of your time. It's my favorite documentary for it's sure. The ever. best documentary. Yeah, and I, I think I saw it with Kumail and Emily. So we're oh, back wow. into our little uh, pool. Yeah, I'm obsessed with it. But that one will show you that it's not just the topic, but fun spot in general. Arcade, eighties okay. cabinet arcade games. Arcade. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was just my safe. Yeah. That's what was it. your what was your number one? What uh, uh zero game? to ten, what was your number one cabinet game? Street Fighter Two. Okay. Had to be. Okay. Close second. I might say the Ninja Turtles game. Yeah. Uh oh. Stepped it. in a kill him. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stepped yep. in a kill him. Yeah. We're coming, April. Yeah. Treader. <laughs> you got to get those blasted turtles. Oh, Craig. He was all. Oh, I mean, he always had a burp. All right. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. We. Uh, this is a joke. Have you ever had Rob Paulson on here? No. Who? Um, who I wonder, that? Rob Paulson is the voice of Raphael in the original Ninja Turtles cartoon. He's also the voice of Pinky from Pinky and the Brain. Oh, he's just you a hear genius. He's Yakko. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. he's yeah. everybody. But he, yeah. I mean, he's Raph. And like Raph's sardonicness, like every morning before school. Yes. Is big piece of this puzzle. Yeah, he's cool but rude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give him a break. Does anybody else find this very convenient? It was always that. You know what I mean? It was always fourth wall breaking at the end, like, Monday Tubulus, we gotta get April. And then, like, Cam <laughs> Clark doing Leo is like, come on, you guys. Master Splinter says, and like, that's Donnie's good. doing that's the really sort of, you know, I can't probably very don't do good. it. Donnie's my least one, but then, like, it's always Raph going, like, so we're going into the big scary tunnel? <laughs> Does anybody else think this is a bad idea? He's comedy. He's comedy. He's, he's comedy. doing it, but he's the only, like, that's how I feel. You just made me realize I think I am Raph. Okay. I wanted to think sure. I was Leo. Oh, great. Oh, good for you. I mean, that, I that's admirable. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm a Raph striving Leo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm striving Leo, but I am Raph. Okay. But I'd rather be Raph now that I we're talking for, about I it. I long for Raph. I, I'm probably pretty hardcore Raph. Michelangelo cartoon. Yeah. Film wise, I'm not Raph. Wait, in the film, how does he change? Film's like, I lost the side. Then it is gone. But I could get it back. I could get it back. Yeah. I Jose know. Canseco bet. Tell me, you didn't pay money for this. Can I tell Oof. you? Can we talk about the socioeconomic implications of voice acting in children's cartoons? I prefer not to. Okay. No, 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 please. Oh, you know, I changed my mind. <laughs> We're going to go back to Ninja Turtles because I'm dead. But I'm this started dead. with an F word, by the way. <laughs> oh, no, I got Ruffalo. I got Ruffalo on the brain. I know Ruffalo's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> we have to end with oh, Ruffalo. We end with Ruffalo. Yes, yeah, yes, no, yes. no. Okay, no everyone listening, watching, <laughs> we'll get to Ruffalo. But I was going to say. Uh, okay.
Um, my daughter watches a show called Spidey and His Amazing Friends. Love it. Do you watch it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then get the it's Spider Man. It's based off Spider Man and His Amazing Friends, with- which is also great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. If you, I like it a lot. I, yeah. My daughter and I call that old Spider Man. Fun. It's also the, the original, the 70s one. Firestar yes, and, and Iceman. Ice yeah, yeah. Deeply sexually charged. Have you yeah, noticed? Sure, sure. That show. That's because it's being written by guys who grew up in the, <laughs> repressed in the 50s. You, my sir, have served me a, a meal the likes of which I never wish to finish. <laughs> Like I'm already planning on tipping 300%. Like I'm, I'm whispering to Val, I don't care what the bill is. I'm tipping this man 300%. Okay. What is going on? Let me ask you, uh, this is a, a real dream come true for me. Right? I don't, I don't know any other dads that know this show okay. and also think about voices and comedy. And yeah, here we yeah, are. Yeah. Tell me about Rhino. Rhino. Yeah. Do Rhino's voice. Um, I, I don't mean old, to put you on the, old, on the spot. New, new Nobody's going to stop me yeah, from, yeah. from just a generic or from uh, from Spidey and his amazing Spidey's friends. Spidey's amazing friends. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, Let right. me ask you about him. Okay, sure. Uh, where is he socioeconomically? Oh, interesting. Uh, uh, did he uh, did he do well in assume, school? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, I know. I'm putting you on the spot. That's okay. I'm gonna say I'll be the face of this. that voice and that character yeah. who can't stop charging. Yeah, yeah I can't I'm stop it. Right. Yeah, you can't stop me, Spidey. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Does yes. he have two parents? You know okay. what I mean. Now let's you talk care. about. Uh, That's what by I like way, about we, you the most. I like a lot of things about you, but your care is like <laughs> paramount. What do you mean? You care about every. You care <laughs> so much. Well, I think a lot. I suppose. You're very analytical. You really like, I got to figure this out. But why is and he the bad care. guy? He's the bad. Yeah, okay. I do care. Yeah. He's the bad guy. Yeah. So Spidey talks like he goes to a, a pretty good Montessori school. I see. Doesn't he? Okay. Okay. He's like, okay. well, my new web fluid. He right. talks like, hey a, guys. Yeah. Yeah. He's okay. sweet. Inter uh, interesting. He's kind. He's yeah. considerate. These are all virtues that we want. And I uh -huh. understand. But why does the bad guy who uh, can't stop running right. have a Brooklyn accent? Yeah. Because he's probably not, he's probably from an underfunded public school system. This is the difference between you and I. Like your care is like, who is this person? What how are they being represented? Where do we where do we go from? What's it? And I'm like, well, he was like Russian in the comic. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we've gotten better. Yeah, you've gotten better. I'm not. I'm not. You mean we were always putting our shadow into the villains, and the shadow yeah. used to be dirty Iron Curtain. I Russia. think more Spidey and his amazing friends is you're going from six, seven hundred years, six decades yeah. of, of canon. Yeah. So I think you're the, you're always citing a source. I don't know that they're starting from scratch, but but now I, the, from very little I know about like children's animation at that age yeah. too a lot of thought does go into like the curriculum of the episode that's right um but i feel like this, so this is a blind is spot i yeah, think it's a sure. blind spot sure, sure, sure. i'm not even saying it shouldn't be mm -hmm. but if rhino just can't stop charging and he has a british accent sure i just can't stop charging right maybe he could be evil british okay uh -huh. but let's talk about goblin green goblin okay i get like weird this is almost inappropriate to say, but he doesn't seem like he has a girlfriend. I'll say that. Okay. He seems kind of like a queen. They're young for they're yeah. young for girls, though. Oh, but I see what you're. you're I think your, it's your like a, a gay Got stereotype. Okay. I think he's, it's almost like oh, my weather machine. Uh -huh. And then let me ask you about Doc Ock on okay. that show. Does she have a boyfriend? She seems like a lesbian scientist. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, maybe I'm reading way too much into this, but there's no. like, there's some. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, <laughs> to be super clear, nothing wrong with being a reclusive green, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> potentially uh -huh. gay. Uh -huh. I'm listening. Uh -huh. Nothing wrong with being I'm a listening lesbian and not scientist. committing. There's nothing wrong with that, too. We um, actually have a guest tarp. <laughs> if you'd like to be covered in the guest tarp while I make this point. I'm not saying any of this is right. I just think it's interesting to ask ourselves, why do the three main characters mm. talk in sweet, are, mm -hmm. uh, I, it's almost mm -hmm. too touchy to say articulate, but you I'm, know what I mean? I, yeah, I, I like so. So and my, my one, mind is in two trains of thought. There's two ahead. trains on two tracks right now. One is what is the inverse? And you gave an example like British British rhino is different. 
like well spoken or or or, or well, tough or like well, if Spidey talked like Rhino and was like, we gotta stop that guy from charging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charging? You don't like that? No. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't. It's not even that I don't like it, but aren't we saying like this kid so, is being raised by his television? Then the <laughs> other train is 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 um circumstantial process, right? So you need vocal distinction. Yeah. Spidey can't sound like Rhino, or you don't. And it might think, be too right? scary if he's just like, I can't stop charging. Yeah, yeah. Like, that would be too, too frightening. Too intense. So it's got to be kind of like, I'm kind of a bad guy. Who's somebody that's already doing voices that can do something different from what they do? Who's doing but it? Every and, hoodlum in, t in Ninja Turtles was also like, hey, Shredder, let's go. Yeah. It was always oh. that voice. Oh, Shredder, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Right. That's Bebop, am right. I right? Uh, yeah, or it was Bebop a rock and steady. Rock, no, but I Bebop think Bebop and rock was the more oh, also like went to underfunded titles. public schools. Sure, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're not. And again, here's the danger zone, Pete. <laughs> Can a kid that goes to a, a private school not talk like that? Yeah, I, I I know what you're saying, and I appreciate that. Yeah, because I'm also speaking in real time. Yeah, and I understand that it's a, a risky subject. It's a it's a difficult. <laughs> it's subject. an important one, honestly. But, but we <laughs> it, I think it's important. But I hear what you're saying. I hear what that's you're why saying. I can't say this enough. But, I can't be wrong. But that that's actually the jump you just made is if we were at a, a, a hoity toity uh, -huh. uh, uh Montessori private school yes. and a kid was like, Yo, teach, these numbers are all out of orders. Uh-huh. Wouldn't you be like, Does this school work? And is that right? Uh -huh. Maybe that's not right. But is it how human beings work? You know, they, so, they are they are are we irrational judgment monsters? I wonder now about the responsibility. <laughs> Look at what we're talking about. It's important. It matters. I wonder now about the responsibility of 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 Spidey and his amazing friends uh with regards to that. And I think that the answer is some, because this isn't just a Spider-Man adventure. But Spider Man does does exist in archetypes. It's all about archetypes, yes, right? It's all about right. shadow, light, uh, greed, yes. uh, selflessness. Yes, but, you Green know, Goblin is greed for yes, sure. Exactly. But I, so yep. it's about exploring those archetypes, honoring the library of source material that has come before Spidey. The visual of of Rhino's the big kid. He's a round head, and and <laughs> he does have a round. But I think. That's part of it too. But that's he's, the he's character bulky. of Rhino. Yeah, yeah. You but know he's what I mean? bulky and he's slow. I'm, uh -huh. I'm probably a guy that you know you you get when you need to move something heavy. But yeah, I yeah, don't. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You get the rest of the riff. I'm not even comfortable doing it. Total. But that is what he's visually representing. Like I would, I would say that that the character design of Rhino looking like that is and going inside. like, Hey, come on, you guys, you know, like what? Oh, I'm so frustrated right this now with Spider-Man. I've got to get him. You'd be like, uh, I don't, he's blunt. Off. He's blunt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're saying extra, I was just thinking about this today that like, you know, when somebody, maybe they get a divorce, but a good divorce mm -hmm. or, or somebody stops drinking or whatever their outsides does, Sometimes, not always, uh -huh. but sometimes the outside is becomes a manifestation of your inside. Okay. Certainly in the world of cartoons, that is true. Yes. So Rhino is blockheaded yeah. and 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 um he's not elegant. No. He doesn't slide through a china shop. He knocks everything down, which is rude. It's inconsiderate. Yes. Right? Yeah. So that's why he looks the way he does. This is my dream. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to talk about this with somebody. Yeah. I do have slight regret saying that Doc Ock looks like a legend. Lesbian, I uh, no lesbians don't have a look per se, mm. but I and and what is the other side of it? I'm just saying, yeah. Spidey and his team are into science in a reasonable way, but she's like the I've taken science too far. Uh -huh. It's become my god. I'm a godless modern. Yes, like, I'm circling back to you caring. You want to care about each individual, and I think the function of mythology and storytelling in general is to do and don't. Is the goofus and gallant, and you have have to have the wrong way to do it to show the right way to do it. Right. And if everybody's doing it the right way, we live in a utopia and there's no Spidey and his amazing and, friends because we're all outside building, right. making beautiful art right. and tangible right. and loving each other. Yes, I love that. And I'm calling bullshit on myself because what, how else could we do Doc Ock? She has to be off the rails to a certain extent. Yeah. She has to be, she seems isolated. It's not even her fault. It's really the tentacles and the way that they're affecting her brain. Ways. I know. And she only has four because her four limbs make exactly. eight.
we've given this some thought yeah, playing yeah, with I the know, toy playing with the toy with my daughter like shouldn't she have eight and eight I'm like <gasps> I do think there's a, there's, I, I mean, I think it actually does tie back to John Wick. We're okay. like using uh, shadowy colors. Uh huh. And, and I'm, I'm with you. I do think you could go to a Montessori school and have a kid talk in a deep Brooklyn accent. Yeah. I just think because being children of the eighties, uh -huh. I think there's a henchman voice and that henchman voice is tied to a person mm. in the same way that, when you have a when Legolas talks in a British accent, mm -hmm. there's an implication there. And I'm also gonna call bullshit on this whole wow. subject that you have to make some choices at some point. Orcs also talk kind of like, hey, let's Dude. go. They're yeah. also talking like they don't read books. These you see what I'm saying? These archetypes of Tolkien is like troublesome. So troublesome. Yeah. I think. I think. <laughs> Well, open the worms, baby. We're already waist deep. Oh my god, we just we just <laughs> this weekend watched the first two Hobbits, and like I love the Hobbits. I I grew up reading that book over like annually. The scary cartoon. Um, love the scary cartoon. The scary <laughs> cartoon looks like a bad acid trip. Yeah, yeah. It's so like, where there's a whip, there is a way. You yeah. just brought me back. We don't have to go to war today. Ah! <laughs> I don't like it, and I don't like how overly. Oh, okay. Hit it, hit this it, is hit exciting it, hit because it, hit it, hit it, hit it. can you call up what Gandalf sounds like in those cartoons? Tell me, I can't. He well, I just would guess. I'll do a the, guess. Okay, Will it knock sure. it out of your head? Bilbo. So not. He talks very much like this, Bilbo. You must go on this adventure. He's very much. What it's is almost this, Abe the narrator? Lincoln. It's Gandalf. Yeah, I know, I know but yeah, it sounds exactly. like Bilbo like a decided he's running for president he or whatever. To, yeah. It's very much paid for by the Baggins. Here come the five armies. They are not <sighs> it, like it's it's very much not who the cert because it's not McKellen. I feel like now right, everybody hears right. a wizard is McKellen, right? Yeah, yeah. And we could talk about no. the implications of that voice too. The quiver is age, is wisdom, is this, like this is just a selfish like tell me. Do you have a Dumbledore opinion on the on recasting of that? Because I have a, a strong one. I don't even remember. Oh, okay. I saw Richard it. Harris versus Michael Gambon. Because oh. Michael Gambon died? Uh, Richard Harris scratch died. Scratch that, reverse it. Okay. Richard Harris Richards died. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> so he was recast. I can't picture it. For some reason, Harry Potter never got its teeth in it, me in you. the same way okay. that others did. Okay. Yeah. It's very deep in our household. It's okay. A big, we're, and we're, what's your take? Because people are going to want to know. Uh, Richard Harris. Gentle. Aged, very subtle, but very twinkly, very playful. Like, yes, really kind of nailed what I just thought I was book. going into Hogwarts. I love and that. And Marco Gambon is very angry and very, everything's on the surface, Harry. There are always foul things about us, Harry. And you're just like, no. Wow. No. No. Like, what it is it? It needs to be all twinkle. And it, 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 it needs to be. The veneer of I have it all together and the most important things are jelly bean flavors, guys. Yes, I can break a mountain with my magic. Yes. But I want to play a game of, you know, of pickup sticks or whatever. Right, or like right, 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 right. Well, that's an archetype. It is it is of like, uh, and the beauty of the seven books is, and obviously there's trouble everywhere you step, Pete. Well, this and is what, what I'm saying is if you make things the art about this the... world in symbols from this world, yeah. you're going to be making mistakes. Your yes. dreams are yeah. inappropriate. Yes, I Your, agree. Music is inappropriate. Song, like yes. stories are inappropriate. Like yeah. no matter how hard we try, here's how the comparison I'll make. No matter what you eat, you fucked something up. You <laughs> fucked something up. An <laughs> ecosystem, a bug's yeah. life, an amoeba's life, right. someone else's food that yes. would have been a fucking and Fox's lunch, you're eating it. Yes. So even if it's not an animal, there's no way to take a breath, a step, mm. anything in this world without fun. And I why like would it, it be yeah. different in the art that we create? I'm not yeah. saying it's a yeah. pass. Yeah. I'm just saying there's a certain wisdom in going like, I know it's not perfect. Yeah. Like when I tell my daughter a story, it might not be as nuanced as it needs to be mm. in regards to the goblins. Yeah. And that, and you're saying we're going into that Jungian space where it's like totally yes. When we're trying to tell stories about an imperfect world, they will be, in fact, imperfect. And if they were perfect, mm. no story, nothing happens. Keep going. I like it. I mean, I'm just taking in that wave because, yeah. 
Hashtag it was a big cancel Spidey and his friends. <laughs> not the '70s one because that's early um, morning boners. That, that's that early morning boners. <laughs> that'll cancel itself and, and it'll renew itself because yeah. that show is that's smoking like, a cigarette. Ice Man, yeah, that, totally. that show is smoking. Ice Man, freeze him, fire starter. <laughs> nice job, babe. <laughs> you know? She like, is naked. Yeah, and her totally. boobs. Sorry, I'm, I don't mean to be, but they have this yeah. like that '70s swoop. Yes, they look like ski slopes. Yeah, 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 yeah which yeah, implies yeah. nipple, which implies boner. Totally, always. <laughs> That's that's math. That's just math. The swoop implies nipple. The only thing that doesn't destroy something else is math. The scientist is and Spidey finite. was a lesbian. There is always a right. The swoop is a nipple. Zero has no value. <laughs> I deeply apologize for all the mistakes. <laughs> but and yet here we are. Okay. Yeah. Um you were talking about Dumbledore oh, recasting. Just, just that, yeah, just Gambon Gandalf is too frazzled and, and too angry. And the Lord of the Rings. And there's no like mystere. And then part of that journey is that Dumbledore seems infallible. And then you, by book seven, you're like, oh, he's human like everybody else. He's made whole, oh. he's made life changing mistakes. He's yeah. had tragedies. So it's that. And but you have to kind of protect that and then show the vulnerability. And Gambon for me, for my money, for my preference was just very angry. And yeah, I was just like, I don't buy it. I understand. Yeah. And I was also thinking, I was kind of replaying some of the things we've said. And you know, yeah. you know what's interesting about the conversation we're having is I'm not saying these are judgments I'm making as much as I'm taking on the hat that I inherited in the 80s, putting it on and saying, what does that hat tell me about what I'm watching? Let's judge it through that lens. Love that. Even though I feel like I can dissociate from that lens. Okay. I still remember it. That's where you get things like Brooklyn accent means... Yes. I didn't go to a great school necessarily. I see. The end, and let's do some well coke. Well said. Let's great. do some coke. <laughs> rails <laughs> right. and rails. Yeah. Um, do it again. Huh. That's, huh. that's funny. That's yeah. Yeah. Um, Murder. Huh. <laughs> Maybe 3 a.m. meeting? <laughs> that's very good. Yeah. That's what, what it did for me was. Yeah. I've pitched. I love it. Yeah. Um. Hmm. <laughs> That's what the writers on my old talk show said was the impression of me when I hate a joke is I'd go, I love it. Uh, and it was just because you're just thinking yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, Lord of the Rings. You just rewatched oh, the two hobbits. We did the two hobbits. And they're troublesome because what, the dwarves or something? They, I think that there is a, uh, I think that there's a very, it has been made by many people correlation to dwarves being a Semitic people. Right. Also, and Harry Potter too. The bank, the keeper, goblins. The they goblins. may say the goblins in that one, and yeah, you know, they uh, goblins was a little too. You think they went to? I think any time that I mean, the it nose so, is prominent, yeah. that is people's and audiences' direct correlation. Right. And then <laughs> Katie and was the, dying <laughs> laughing. And it's but they're like, we'll give you a loan. I was right. like, this is a little exactly anybody. It is anybody. It is, is anybody. Human. It is anybody. Yeah. Is 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 anybody? <laughs> but to, but to your point, Legolas, like elves, a British high, you know, tea time, also, and the the royalty. They're and, also you know. celebrities. Jared Leto. They're so clean. Interesting. And, and, and they have clean. Do you know what that's from? <laughs> Basically, like Peter O'Toole from uh, Lawrence of Arabia. It's clean. What do you like about the desert? It's clean. <laughs> Terrifying. Have you seen that movie? No. Should I? No. <laughs> Can I, I tell you? For the cinematic, the <laughs> shots are wide. They shot in the desert. Who Nobody cares? ever had 400 horses before. I will, Fine. I will. We finally did it. Kobe and I did it during the pandemic. We we're like, Lawrence of Arabia. Like, Spielberg says it's like his favorite movie. We have to watch it. It's crazy. Yeah, Spielberg it's was nuts. eating like Reese's Pieces, but in the 70s that had like cocaine in yeah, them. Yeah, he was yeah. having a different he experience. He wanted to eat M&M's, but right. M&M's said no. <gasps> Riff of the century. <laughs> I got it. Okay. I got every part of it. <laughs> and everyone else did. Okay, good. There are people that don't even know that story about E.T. <laughs> that knew in their bones what yeah. you were saying. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Okay, so goblins and anti-Semitism. Uh, just, just, oh, and, and the Just British... to your point, I think of like socioeconomics assigned to yeah. an entire race, not a character, an entire race. Yes. Tolkien did seem to oversimplify, and I think this isn't my take on it, but I have heard, and it's easy to observe certain correlations to different race factions yes. within that world of yes. Middle Earth. Right. Yep. 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 What do we do? Because these we are do? some of the great... I think that this about the Bible sometimes. The Bible mm -hmm. was like... 
you know, 2000 years ago, you watch, uh, I watched, what was it? The last duel. Did you watch the last duel? Yes. I really liked it. You are an Affleck fan. I do love an you Affleck. Love an Affleck. Yeah, love and it. that's, that's him skiing. He's sometimes having fun, he surfs, man. sometimes he skis. <laughs> he's skiing. You know where else he's skiing? He's having fun. Good will hunting. He, he came back notes of Chucky so good. in uh, The Last Duel. But The yes. Last Duel is the Dark Ages, uh, or it's about to be the Dark or it is the, Shh, It's about it, it to be the Dark It seems pretty dark, yeah. yeah. It seems pretty dark. And that was like a long time after the Bible. People are like brushing yeah. their teeth with the rats. We're looking at four, 13, 1400s? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like, th thank you for yeah. that. I couldn't it, have I found think, it for I the think. life of me. No, I don't know. But that's exactly, so uh, I do know that the witch trials are 1690s, sure. right? So sure. that's 1690 years after Christ. Yes. And that was when we were like, put a leech on your dick on the full moon. Like we were <laughs> yeah, full yeah, of yeah. fucking shit. Yes. We didn't know goddamn anything. So when people have a problem with the Bible, I'm like, first of all, the Old Testament. And I'm like, that's five thousand years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. amazing that anything and, is usable. And do you Any subscribe to the variations of it that it's being rewritten? And just only to your point of story tell stories being told in a flawed world will yes. end up being flawed. And that there have been there are many owners of the Bible of being the tellers of that story. You mean like you mean? changing it and yeah, yeah every, of course. the Roman church rewriting and, and different scrolls being found after a thousand and all these things, you know, and of just course. the apostles themselves all having different, you know, Buddy, prove yeah. if we weren't filming this, prove what we said in the house is something I always said. Like yeah. we always forget that we live in this nebulous conundrum. Yeah. And, but we really please ourselves by being like, you had breakfast this morning and I know it. Yes, yes, yes. I yes, can yes. spread it on your breath. Totally. When really all that's ever happened is this. Just this. Yes. This. And that's yeah. even questionable. Totally. So the fact that the Ten Commandments is a goddamn revelation. It it just is. I only bring up 5, that point thousand years ago. To enhance your point yes. of like, yeah, it's like, do you believe all or believe none of it? Is no. like not fair and you not and not realistic. You want a fun, fun one from my Christian college days. Okay. Just a fun little if you're ever at a cocktail party. Redundant, but go ahead. What, Christian college? <laughs> fun and Christian college. <laughs> I thought you were hard. I got it. You didn't have to say fun, man. There was a time when every college was Christian. Isn't that weird? <laughs> so Harvard true. is a Christian college. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Or it was founded as one. Sure, anyway, sure. they just called it college back then. <laughs> but they also brush their teeth with, the, with rats. This is my point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the part of the Lord's prayer for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Which yes. is everybody's favorite. It's the closer. Yes. Uh, was definitely added by a scribe. Isn't that fun? Yeah. So what I like about that is it shouldn't, it doesn't mean you have to stop saying that at the end of the prayer, mm. but to me, it's this invitation to remember that it's all a mystery and it's all the whole point of it mm. is what it does for you, what it stirs inside of you in this moment. It's not about in your brain being like, I know Jesus said this, we wrote it down, it made it 2000 years all the way to me and now I'm saying it and it's his magic words and now I'm magic, yes. fuck all that shit. Or if it's real or if it's that, it's just where it takes you in this moment. What mm. else could be the point of anything except what it does for you? And I really believe we all have two I was thinking about the Looney Tunes, the angel and the devil. Yes. I think that's one of the most true things there is. Yeah. And and what a gift it was. I, obviously, Looney Tunes isn't the first one to do it, but we do have a higher self, a quiet, small part of you that knows everything, like the Bob Marley song, everything's going to be all right. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. We love things that are like, it's going to be all right. Yes. And then the devil, which is our ego, it's our protector, it's this thing, mm. is also kind of going like, actually, there's a lot to be scared of. I'm not saying he's not right in a certain sense, mm. but they both coexist. And everything, whether Jesus said it or not, is either nudging you towards love or towards fear at the end. How, how would you, Pete, voice your angel versus how would you, in the animated show, Okay. Pete's Heavenly Shoulders... Okay. How do you, what is the voice of the angel and what is the voice of the devil? Here's my devil, then you're going to do it. Okay, great. Yes, 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 yes. Obviously, my yes. devil is this. Yes. All right. Hello. How's oh. it going? Let me tell you. Okay. I can't help but notice that your neighbor is sunbathing topless. What do you say we get that ladder and go up on the roof with a little jerk in us? <laughs> and then I can't do him, but my angel is Jack McBrayer. <laughs> Hey, Pete, <laughs> Pete no. don't look over that hedge. That's her <laughs> private space. Where does it end? Come I on. <laughs> you know the right thing to do. 
And it, why don't we just go make I, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Yeah. You are reminding me. <laughs> We're going to get to yours, and we're going to get to sure, Ruffalo. Sure, 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 yeah, yeah. I was just noticing, like, I, I like doing Trump because it's just fun. Mm -hmm. And somebody, I noticed that it's closing the nose. Oh, interesting. You know, like, you know, as an impressionist, when you go, like, wait. Yeah. And there's, it's like, mm. you ever see a puppet, like a, a good puppet from the Henson all people? The time. And the And the back of the... <laughs> <laughs> And the back of the face is all these buttons. Like it has eyebrow articulation and noses yes, 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 and yes, yes, eyes. Yes. Yeah, the different ring things that they can pull. Yeah. I feel like an impressionist finds that in their in this part of their face. Oh. And you go like, oh, Trump isn't, it's a great time. It's actually, you close it up. You close it up because right, you got to right, right. close it. And then and then you go, oh, I have another little piece of it. Yeah. And yeah, that's I'm going to tell you, uh, like. And you just noticed. Part I just of my nerves of coming here is knowing you to be a very thoughtful, very analytical person. Mm. And I am struggling with, in my life right now to open myself to more analysis because I think for the first half of my life, I was like, why well, if you analyze it, you kill the joy, you know? <gasps> and and I'm only bringing that up because yeah. specifically to impressions, I'm not. You don't think about it that way. I don't think, I just go, does it sound like that? Like I, I, I picture it in my head. Oh, interesting. And I just replicate it. Well, it's like a anytime, muscle memory then. Yeah, a little because bit. Because your Jack it's McGrath more was closed and, in the notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, come on, uh, Pete. Hey there. Hey, hey there. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is very musical. And then, yeah, it's more, it's more that does it sound right to my ear and then picturing, like I can kind of picture the person in my head and he's always, his head's always up yeah. a little bit well, to the right well, side. And he's like, hey, I don't think that's very nice personally. And if I <laughs> and I wouldn't be a proper young lad if I didn't ask you to leave this place at once. You know, that's, like That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I but, got but it. The, and I'm thinking about it. You are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. But that actually can be a handicap. You know, it, it, yeah. can, it can slow the game down. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think. Yeah, same. I think the same of like, well, but you got to look at your shit too and you got to, how are you going to get better if you don't take notes? But if and you're remembering that a the struggle things, of mine. Mm. like sometimes I have to sure. write them down. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have like, you, it sounds like you don't. Like a touchstone, I suppose, but sometimes I forget the touchstone. Like for me, Pacino, yeah. some, some, some sort of, hey, hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How so, are you? Right. All right. Yeah. And then- that sometimes needs enough. to be written down, though. Like, I need to write down, like you said, yeah. the bounce for Keanu. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's yeah, the voice of your devil? It. Oh, God. The voice of my devil. Um, the voice of my devil of the, like, is, is like, um, do you know who uh, um, Patrick Page is? <laughs> no. It's such a nerdy theater thing. He plays Hades in uh, Hades, Hades Town. Town? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why do we build the wall? That. My children, my children. I think just that would be, that's the sound. That's the voice. That's the Mr. The Grinch like, voice, basically. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah a exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Thurston Railvin. What's his name? Is oh, that him? Yeah, Ravenscroft. Thurl Ravenscroft. Great name. Did he change it after He's also he realized the, he had a dope voice? <laughs> I don't know. Now I think, I'm no longer Sam Ewise. Yeah, exactly. I'm no longer. <laughs> I'm yeah. certain Ravenscroft. Yeah. Thurl Ravenscroft. That's wow. his name. And he's your mean one. And he's also when the ghosts come out to socialize. <sighs> he's that guy. That's devil. Okay, that's great. I feel like Angel... You can say it's like it's okay. It can be me. It's gonna be Pete Holmes. Thank you. I was gonna say my wife. Is oh, that cute. lame? But I like of just like no. I want to be better. I want to. I want to do. What a beautiful wanna, answer, Val. I say that about Val. That's my wife all the time. Yeah. Is like it's like your partner should be the little reminder mm -hmm. of your higher self. Yeah, and and she's with me all the time. And and, and like to really like analyze and go in on it like. She, the way she moves through the world, like part of my biggest attraction, part of my commitment to like, I want to be with you for life is that the way she treats others, the, the her discipline, her, these are all things I yeah. aspire to yeah. emulate her. Yeah. But then there's also like the angel voice. It's like, you know, you should do this. And you're like, oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's that part of it too. Interesting. She's like, yeah, I know. I know. I know. Where, I'll get to it. Where do you struggle? I do laundry once a week. Okay. <laughs> That's so that's cliche. My that's style. such a like cliche, Mary. I don't know why I pulled that reference, but no, 
I thought laundry is important. We have a hot tub, and I was cleaning it, and I thought this oh, morning wow. I was like, "Men clean hot tubs." Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So stupid. Big machines. But the longer right. I yeah. live, the more I'm like, just like Tim Allen was right. <laughs> I yeah. clean the hot tub. Yeah, and like I change make you the shirt. water. Yeah, men clean. Tim hot Allen tubs. was right. Tim Allen was right. <laughs> and Val. Val, it's just a classic head heart thing. Like she's just so heart and she, but she doesn't, mm. Val will go deep, but she just, I'm wondering what your wife has that you aspire to. Val just has more of an embodied, less reactive. Like I get real, another way to put it is I'm just more in touch with my anger, more of my mm. fire. And mm -hmm. she's more of a water yeah. peacemaking. I think that applies sign. to us as well. Yeah. She's, she's like all others comfort before mine. Right. Isn't that annoying though sometimes? Uh, for, sometimes. For her? Sometimes. And for you maybe? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And I'm like, I'll get comfortable. I'll get comfortable and I'll help anybody who needs it. You know After what I mean? you're comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, I got get my that. thing. Hold on. What's the rules? What is the plan? What is the goal? Great. Done. Got it. Okay. Who needs help? Right. Is she not super goal oriented? I, I know we're talking about very your wife much, now. Very much. Very much is. so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or she is or she isn't. She is goal oriented, oh. but it's like, I will get there. But this person, but it, on the road to getting there, this person needs help. That's the priority. That's interesting. Because I was just thinking about, I was just watching some great, you know how YouTube sounds like you're just like bullshitting with some video, but then you watch some and you're like, this is better than Nova. Something that has everything <laughs> will have the best of it and the worst of it. Yes. Yeah. And this was a good one. I forget cool. what it was or I would give it a shout out. But it was a video and it was talking about the mythos <laughs> about of of uh, of Maverick, Top Gun Maverick. Oh, I have a whole theory on that. Well, we're, we still have Ninja Turtles and we still, we, we finished Lord of the yeah. Rings though, didn't we? Um, yeah. Yeah. Comfortably? Question mark? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, okay, let's get into Maverick. But they were saying, and I really immediately agreed with this, that the Western mythology, that's mm. all mythos, it's just a fancy way of saying that, the story we're all kind of living under, especially as men, mm. and, and whatever. I know women that that movie means a ton to as well. So people that are living from a masculine place, yeah. Um, the story is you can do it, mm -hmm. believe in yourself, mm -hmm. go for it, don't be afraid, do what others will not, mm. and occasionally accept help. The last one is important. <laughs> right, right. It's a steak that's mm -hmm. you, and the side dish is like two pieces of broccoli. Wow. But those pieces of broccoli are super important because it's when the helicopter with the double guns comes up and someone comes in and saves For you. Sure. By the way, this is Batman. This is every story yeah. that you and I were ever told. Cut to me. Mm. I sounded like Terrence McKenna. <laughs> Cut to me. <laughs> the strange thing about psychedelics. I can't quite it do it. Good. It was okay? Yeah, I liked that. Um, <laughs> Katie liked it. All right, rocking Katie. <laughs> Cut to me in my life. What am I doing? Mm. Going for it. Obviously, Katie's a good example. Katie helps. I yes. accept help from Katie yes. and Joe, our, our YouTube guy. But for the most part, I feel like I'm out there. I'm trying to book the guests, trying to make the show. You know, yeah. that's, that's yeah. me noticing... Our mythos isn't a group of hunters. It's one, it's Rambo. Interesting, you, yeah. you said commando, it's commando. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's predator. Yeah. You fight the monster and maybe at the last second, yeah. uh, Han Solo comes back and, and shoots the sure. guy at the right moment. Right. Hit it. Wow. Yes. Oh, that's it. Yes. Yes, period. Yes. Agreed. What's your thing subscribe. on Maverick? Subscribe and like. Uh, don't um, like. I actually, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe, like but it. don't like Don't like it. it. <laughs> and comment, but then delete it. It helps the algorithm <laughs> if you Contrarian. comment and then delete it. <laughs> um, Maverick. I saw it. Entertaining as all get out. It's a very silly movie. Also doesn't work on a TV. I don't know if you tried to watch it on a no, TV. I, I don't it's know that I'll the go back. And then, this is the only reason yeah. to go back is at first I was like, you know, we we will we will bend backwards and move worlds to get Val back in there. Yeah. But Kelly McGinnis, go fuck yourself. <laughs> like he was we're, getting the Jennifer, we're getting Jennifer. Oh, right. you know what I mean? Like, Kelly like McGinnis. this is McGinnis, and this is because she aged like a human being. She's just a person, a human, I'm, a person. I'm, I'm saying that in exactly. her defense. I'm totally. saying she, but Val as well. But yeah, yeah. because of the masculine values or whatever. So it, wait, it's just I'm the sorry, don't Connelly skate by it. that. That's completely valid. Yeah, yeah. They were like, it doesn't matter. He can literally be ill. Yeah, maybe Kelly it's, can still. It's okay. Talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but she, yeah. is she? I, I don't want to riff on that. It's too. It's too. It's risky. sensitive, and it's yeah. the, and everybody deserves love and recognition. And I just think, like in a movie that is 
fueled by nostalgia. It is like the lifeblood of that movie is remember, you know? Yeah. Um, that the Jennifer Connelly fueled thing by or, nostalgia. Yeah. Unless it's not ripping hot. Unless, unless well, right. the, the nostalgia is that women are beautiful. And they never, well, buddy. Women are, are Okay, so cut to Tom form. Cruise being, in. I love T. Cruise, but he's being I injected with Very so many so. things that are keeping him up. There's a lot of For like sure. effects being done. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, because it's not his fault. That's not like Tom is out there saying, you need to make me look perfect. That's no. also yeah, yeah, the yeah. mythology. He can't age. He can't be weak. He can't deteriorate. Totally. And the women, it's bees and flowers, man. He needs to have a sharp stinger. Mm. And I know bees are, are girls. Are they girls? I gotta go. This show Birds just, and bees I, I or bees can't. and flowers? Where are we? What I'm I mean, saying is women. Because women, we're, ta well, we're, oh, we're the taking women the are pollen flowers. from the flower. Yeah, it doesn't quite add right. up. Okay, cool. But the flowers need to stay beautiful and fertile. Uh -huh, uh -huh, it's like uh -huh. what we do, we don't know what to do with... I'm not calling them crones, but this idea that women become crones, they dry up and they're no longer. Huh. So their whole point was to be baby makers for yes. powerful chiseled men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously yeah. is still at play. And and if you yeah. kind of look like you hit menopause, what are you doing in this movie? You need I to think that there's right? a more, uh, for I, me, that's not I my think opinion. there's a more interesting and elegant and emotional way to tie in. If you're going to tie it all, all the the past in tied all in but have her be here's dead. my theory have her be uh, dead uh, oh, <laughs> just kidding, have her I'm be happy kidding. have her be yeah what because it's what ambition and drive and 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 going the fastest and doing the thing that she said that's not for me and she did something and it's lovely right. and soft and that's equally as valid i don't know right i it, hear you i'm not trying to rewrite it but the jennifer connelly thing just that was the thing that stuck me a lot it was like oh man you know because yeah. so here's my theory Tom, at first I was like, watch the movie as if Jennifer Connelly is a ghost because she never really interacts with anybody else. She is the younger, she's this phantom version of what he thinks he deserves, right? Like, it's interesting. It's gotten better. I've, 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 I've pitched, I've, I've worked on it. I've spitball, I've rewritten, I've edited. He does not survive that initial test flight. The test flight and the thing where he's going to be, he dies. It you fails. And everything you see after that is his fantasy of what his life you're should talk, be. You're is, talking Birdman. Yes. He dies on stage. Wow. He dies in that test flight. You can't push it to think. He dies. And then it's, he goes back to his old school where his nemesis is inferior, is ailing, and like he needs to go and show him love because he's now a, un, the unthreatened top dog. His biggest flaw is that he cares too much. This is and the girl and the the thing and he boats. He's on a boat. He's sailing. It's like this he's is on not a, a thing. motorcycle. He's yes. on a motorcycle with no helmet. It's yes. like who's yes. allowing that? <laughs> in twenty in he's twenty eighteen, he's, like, he's Ma hashtag Maverick, Maverick is dead. Is dead. Maverick Maverick is in in heaven or yes. or whatever. He's this or in Top his Gun dream heaven. state. Yeah. And he's like, and John Ham is there. John Ham. And he's yelling at and me. He's threatened by me. He doesn't like me because he doesn't get it. Like. And Harris is there. He's threatened by me. Everybody, and, he doesn't like I, it. and my biggest problem. And by the way, they need me for a mission where drones don't work. Where it's in the country. Of <laughs> and okay. why don't and drones work? <laughs> because they need me to fly it. That's why they need. They need me in the canyon, just like Star Wars, to fly it. Don't say just like Star Wars. <laughs> but it is. That was. No, I know. That's Maverick's favorite movie. <laughs> That's why this is happening to fly through the canyon to drop the bomb exactly like Star Wars it's in a the Death Star. unnamed unnamed country with an unnamed threat that America the the nation that spends more on military defense by 10 times anybody else doesn't have the right planes that can keep up but they need Maverick it's all his You mean the people pay, in the movie paying one tenth of what we spent have better planes Yes This is too long for an Instagram clip, and that's the greatest <laughs> regret of my life. <laughs> How this whole thing deserves to be a real. Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, we've gotten deep, but you've gotten for a guy who doesn't like to think. This whole time, I'm like self-analyze. Maybe Taryn and I need to do a right. podcast. Right, together. right. I'm just enjoying just it so much. Same, same. But you go everywhere, so okay. You're saying you don't like to self-analyze, but yeah. like there, without going too much into it. What you're saying is so clearly the masculine uh, Western mythology. Mm -hmm. I can do it. They need me. Yeah. 
Like, and, and there, I, I'm not even shitting on it. Like purpose is so important. And I get to write my biggest regret. I lost You're my best really friend. fucking freaking me out, man. I it's, lost my best friend. How can I make that right? Can I tell you? Okay. So I've been working with Matt McCarthy and Oren Brimmer. We did the Batman. We do the Batman videos together. And, and just like any relationship that's spanned over a decade, we've had times, never like bad, sour, disgusting times, but yeah. just kind of times where we're less in touch. Mm -hmm. And, and and I would say this if Matt was here. In fact, it's quite a lovely story. Matt and I sort of uh, fell out of touch and we were just kind of living parallel. There was a moment where it, it just seemed like we wouldn't be friends again. Mm. Um, and then we reconciled. Maverick and uh, and Goose. Goose's son, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the the pleasure I get literally falling asleep at night mm. Uh, having a tour, I love having something that I'm doing. So that's purpose. That's yes, a mission. Yes. Writing a wrong, a friend that mm. slipped away, and he gets it too. We're like two dudes in our forties that can make each other cry, just going like that. Life can be long enough that like we're back together yes. and things are good, and we're we're almost like different people. Yeah. And that's baked into this movie. Yeah. Like, and I'm thinking about my dad. He would he loves being needed. He would love mm. to like have the mistakes of the past go. Like, we understand. By the way. I feel as I'm saying this, not just my dad, isn't that what everybody kind of wants? I think so, to feel special. Feel that's special. My thing is, that's my shorthand is like, everybody wants to feel special. And forgiven and understood. I guess that is all under the umbrella of special. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I, I, yeah, the forgiven and understood, I think the people would define that different. I don't know that that's an everyone thing. I hear you. Thing. I'm sure there's many people who've lived their lives not feeling the need to be forgiven or, yeah. or there's many people who take pride in like, nobody gets me. And that's what turns me and That's what makes me feel special. Uh, you know, it's a specialness. Yeah. I actually think you're absolutely right. For me, the way that my psyche is wired, Val has noticed whenever we hang out with new people, I, I will make inappropriate jokes and I'm just <laughs> looking for someone that's safe. Yeah. 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 Cause if, once we become friends, those kind of those pretty much go away. Yeah. But I'm funny. just going like, are you gonna be weird? Yeah. Or yeah, can yeah. I say interesting some of the things I've said to you today? <laughs> Bicycle horn. <laughs> What's that? Bicycle horn. What <laughs> <Or> can <laughs> I say? <laughs> I don't know. So you don't do mm -hmm. self analysis? I I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I, I'm you know in in my. The old, they're all reflective forties. Uh, just going, just, just in terms of <laughs> like, because, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, uh, impressions are a great small example of that. Like impressions are like, I watch the person and I go like, you know, they sort of sound like this. And if it's not in there, like I, I was desperate to do a Robert Downey Jr., but I'm just, it's not within my vocal range. I think you can do it. Yes, it, it's not. It's I, just not. Why do I? Right. I feel like Guys, we could do it. Ordering for burgers. You know, it's just that clipped thing. Yeah. Like I can hit, but just the sound that, tone. What, I can't. Is that what you? Yep. Is that what you think? All right. All right. You're gonna you're gonna come in here Let's and go to dad. He's got that twang. And yeah. I, but uh, yeah, I can't. Can do I it. can I share something with you Please. that I think might be fun? Yeah. Paul, this is my Paul Rudd. And oh it's great. Not, it's oh, not fun. vocally correct. Okay. But it's like okay. I've I've done this so many times on the show. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> okay. It's two. He's going to do two. Uh -huh. Meaning, th this is a Paul riffing, which always makes the movie because it's always so funny. Mm -hmm. Over there having a water, drinking a, drinking a, drinking a liquid death, drinking a liquid. Good. Right? It's very always the good. second one. He gets it very on the good. second. Yes. He's very, like, very good. Over there wearing, wearing a hat. Mm -hmm. yeah. This guy's baseball hat. Yeah. <laughs> hide, hide the bald spot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's just, that's, that's really all good. I got. That's really that's good. That's all I got. Gonna have a taquito. What are you having? Some Mexican food. Wow. Gonna have a couple. Gonna have a couple taquitos. Yeah. That's it. Yes. That's the closest. Well I've done. Come. Well done. <laughs> I just, it's great. You're just giving me the specialness we were just talking it's about. It's so good. It it is. I saw it immediately. Well, I get excited. You know what made me reach out? I've been meaning to reach out for you for a long time. To you for a long time. But Bobby Moynihan mentioned the buh of Brad Pitt. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I just yeah. got so excited. I've never seen your Brad Pitt. Oh, okay. I don't want to morning radio you, but... All good. Um, All good, you are. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the Brad Pitt impression, like, the, the tough thing on the show was because my impression comes of, like, absolute worship, like, 
that's a man. That's a cool, handsome we're so, man. We're so similar. Like, that is it. Yeah. Um, and so the the impression wasn't like making fun of it. It was like, I'll be closer to it. Wait, he, like, does he not like it? I don't know. I don't oh. know if he's ever seen it. But yeah. but I'm just talking about like for SNL finding the funny hook. You I know see. what I mean? Yeah. It was tricky. And my only answer for it was to put him in the Brad Pitt shouldn't be there, you know? So it was like right. Brad Pitt weatherman. And the one sketch I wrote that I liked, but the show did, um, was Brad Pitt loves horses. Brad Pitt shouldn't be there. You know, it's just that. The category and then he ended is up being a weatherman be on the thing, which is so funny. Oh, like he did like a bit, but Brad Pitt loves horses. Brad Pitt loves horses where, where he, 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 there's a mystery about his past and it comes out through the sketch that he was rescued by a horse as a young boy. And he's in, got an obsession and he has all these impressive world leaders as guests, but all he wants to talk about is, Palomino, beautiful horse, wonderful horse, gentle, golden. <laughs> and it all started Over from. Hands! It all started from Over seven. Hands! Seven. There's a <laughs> scene of him and <laughs> him and Morgan are at the bar, and he's like, "You know what? I don't think you're quitting because you believe that. I think you want to believe that because you're quitting. You want me to agree with you and say, yeah, 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 it's fucked. We should all." Go fucking live in log cabins. But I don't agree with you. I do not. Thank you for the beer. And it's that. And then the buh is more 12 monkeys. I see what you want. You want to escape. That's sane. That's very sane. Ah. <laughs> it's just that thing. He's like, somebody's in my chair. <laughs> buh. Yeah. I don't care if I morning radio, dude. That was the happiest <laughs> I've been all day. <laughs> Summer is in full swing, you guys. It is here, and I am so happy to say that my family and I have been spending so much more time together, outdoors, enjoying the warm weather, and just having simple, legit fun in the fresh air, thanks to our friends at Electric E-Bikes. Like electric, but electric e-bikes and just in time electric is bringing you fast and fresh new ride the xp 3.0 their latest e-bike model featuring new hydraulic brakes snag your new electric xp 3.0 e-bike this month and experience what i'm talking about freedom like never before i got val an expedition which is our cargo bike with the plus one seat which she can hold on to or leela can hold on to and we love it it's super comfortable it's well built it's sturdy and it runs so smooth and picks up really fast it made me cackle with joy when i saw how easy it was just to turn my wrist and start moving or you can use it with the pedal assist on, which is like the best of both worlds. You pedal like a manual bike, but it assists you. The battery and the motor assists you and you just go faster and easier. It's fun. The batteries last a really, really long time. The one we have, the Expedition has two batteries, which is incredible. So you can really go a long distance and it gets us outside laughing and playing together. We use it for errands. Go, you can go all the way to the beach from where we live, which is incredible. Running to the grocery store because it has the cargo uh, basket, which is awesome when we forget something or just want to make a small run or just going for a cruise and having, like I said, just old school out door but it's like old school new school it's like a new way to ride a bike and we are loving it the most legit fun i've had in a long time and the electric e-bike was created with a, a mode of transportation that anyone can ride with quality feature-filled models financed as low as 73 dollars a month your adventure will not cost a fortune they include a powerful removable battery a bright lcd display seven speed gearing and five levels of pedal assist to power your ride. Electric e-bikes are foldable and ship free, fully assembled. It's truly cool. You cut open the box, you basically roll it out and you're ready to go. So rediscover your independence this summer with an XP 3.0 from Electric. You can visit electricebikes.com to learn more and explore the epic models Electric has to offer. That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C-E-B-I-K-E-S.com, electricebikes.com. Com. Also, we're brought to us by a real game changer in my life is Ritual Multivitamins. You guys know you can talk fantasy football with your friends all day, but asking them for health advice, not so much. It's not really the move. Ritual takes all the guesswork out of the vitamin game. Their multivitamins for men is based on science to help fill common nutrient gaps in the diet and level up your nutrient goals. It's an all-around 
win. I had so many gaps in my diet. I'm always experimenting with what to eat. And Ritual brought me from a deficit to when I go to the doctor, bam, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. Filling those gaps, I can tell you, it absolutely works. So many people feel like a multivitamin, you just pee it out, right? You just pee it out. That's the criticism I hear. Uh, Ritual multivitamin is different. It has a delayed release, which means it breaks down in your intestine, which is where it can be absorbed directly into your body. Scientifically developed with high quality quality key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. Ritual is a new type of two-a-day uh, from helping support heart health with omega-3 DHA to normal muscle function to normal immune function with vitamin D3. This small step can have a major impact. It's made traceable. It's vegan-friendly, non-GMO, sugar-free, gluten-free, major allergen-free. I also appreciate that it's uh, fasting-friendly. If you take it on an empty stomach, something like zinc can upset your stomach. But again, it has a delayed release, so it's not going to upset your stomach. And a minty essence in every, every bottle keeps things fresh and makes taking your multivitamin a thing you actually enjoy and look forward to. So do what I do, guys. I've been on the Ritual Train for a long time. I take their probiotic as well. Uh, it, and they're essential for men, two time, uh, two pills once a day. Essential for men is a quality multivitamin from a company you can actually trust. And get this, Ritual is offering weirdos 20% off, 20% during your first month. Go to ritual.com slash weird to start Ritual or add essential for men to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash weird. All right, let's get back to Taryn. That was the happiest <laughs> I've been all day. <laughs> I, okay, I didn't, until you started doing it, two things. Mm -hmm. One, he talks a little like Macaulay Culkin. Interesting. I feel it. I feel Culkin huh. in him. Okay. I don't even know what I mean. Yeah. But, oh, they both talk like they have something in their mouth. He, he kind of yeah. almost like he has, hey. well, buh. what wow. are you going to do? Pete Holmes, funny guy, great guy, doing the podcast now. We'll get into it. <sighs> Two, <laughs> I used to do an impression of Brad Pitt laughing. Okay. Because it's this. <laughs> Come on, Lou. <laughs> Let us use the glove, Lou. <laughs> it's Please, a, Lou. It's a yeah. very H-A-H-A. -H -A. That's yeah, him yeah, and yeah. Uh, Jesse James. Uh, oh. Why are you still Minus sucking Fight air? Fight Club. Why are you still sucking air while so many of my friends are... Oh, yeah. Got you like a fish. Yeah, 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 I can yeah. be, I can hear it. From, I'm never yeah. going to do it. I'm never going to do it. <laughs> wow, nobody's asking me to do impressions, but yours is incredible. The, the thrill of it is you don't even know that you know how they sound. Yeah. So the, the joy of an impression for a person hearing them yeah. is you're actually teleporting them to a moment. So that's why a mm. beloved person mm -hmm. like Brad Pitt is a little bit more fun because you're taking me back to like a time when I was transfixed. And you just made me realize I didn't re know I knew something. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. It's like time travel or it's something. It is fascinating. Yeah, it yeah. is. It, to me, I because impressions have always kind of come easily. I've always been quite dismissive of them in my own life. Of I like think it's that's, a party trick. It's that's whatever. Silly. Yeah, I'll take that because you're a music but, theater guy. And that's that's the thing is that the musicality of it. That's right. I can appreciate and I put value into. You're like a well-tuned you know, piano. Sure. So when you can go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I see him. He's stumbling. Yeah. yeah. What about yeah. the guy? I'm well, thinking I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> so great. So great. And I'm thinking about the guy who owns the um, the Deadwood guy. Ian McShane. Is that his name? Yeah. Mr. He, he rode in on a cloud of fire, you cocksucker. Like yeah. that guy? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, then yeah. in Wick, he's a little more debonair. You're right, right, right. He, the I Continental. Mean, the Continental. Mr. Yeah. Okay, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. a good devil voice. That's a great devil voice. Ian McShane. Him and Sexy Beast. That was like the first time that I, like, who is this guy? It's funny that, dude, I was just thinking this week, would the devil's advocate have been better if it was Ian McShane? Oh, God. I don't know. Because as you were doing your Pacino, one of know. my ends is, I have so many names. Call me dad. Wow. You know, very, it's that incent. Very funny. But he's not a snitch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you too. Fuck you. Oh, so good. Oh, God. Yeah. All right. Ever see a ghost? No. 
ever almost die? No. That's but, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I got really scared recently. That's the hesitation. Mm. We went snowboarding in uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Uh-huh. And I hadn't been in a while. Let and me I, ask you, where a lot of people on the slopes like, oh, I just love snowboarding. Hey, and then- I love that. I gotta get me one of them waffles up in the log cabin. <laughs> or is that a voice you didn't hear <laughs> so much on your ski trip? Well, no, but to, but you hear a lot of like, yeah, it's great. Hey, welcome. No, it's a really nice place. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, you're right. You're Julie, right. Julie Louis Dreyfus owns a house here. <laughs> Heard that three or four times. <laughs> That's a big selling point for that. <laughs> JLD, okay. huge in Jackson. Yeah, all right. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah, she's. All right. I love her. I yeah. love her. Huge yeah. fan. Yeah. Um, uh, got up, went to the, went to the, you know, took a couple easy runs, started to get comfortable again. Grew up snowboarding. Haven't been now in almost a decade, probably. And we went up, and just the first turn caught the back heel and slammed my head, and half my vision went yellow. And immediately, I'm thinking like. Every horrible ski trip accident, fluke accident. You're like, yeah, they didn't hit them, hit their hard head that hard, you know. And then it's like just on the slips. So I was nervous then. So that's the closest I've slipped. Why did you slip? So I didn't. I I turned onto the backside, (laughs) and I and my back heel caught the edge, and it just like wham, flat, like flopped me down against the snow. And like I had a helmet on for, of course, but it just I'd never like half just bright yellow. Don't of course us, Maverick. See, this is why you need a helmet. Yeah, you need a helmet, <laughs> Maverick. In, unless you're in heaven. <laughs> there are no helmets in heaven. <laughs> Hell is all helmets. Hell's and your hair helmets. keeps getting caught in the in the, in the, in the wind creases. <laughs> the chin, the chin skin gets pinched in the clip. How is it 2023 when we haven't cracked helmets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just make a comfortable helmet. Just make a nice, soft, easy, smooth, nice. jelly-filled helmet. Okay. Uh, Jelly head. <laughs> what is that? Over and over, I need it. Helmets, you're a bitch. You must be filled with soft goo. Jelly, Jelly, Jelly helmet. helmet. You really you nailed, nailed it. it. You don't know that song? No, Jelly head. I thought we were doing the Fred and bum, Kristen bum, thing. Bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. We kind of were, which is one of my favorite bits ever. He did it on the show. Oh, did he? I for you here? It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so Val fun. Val and I do it all the time. It's the best. Do you want to do it just for fun? Sure. Please, sir. Please, please sir. Sir, sir no, please. please. One more song. Four, three more songs. Four more songs. Okay. This song is called. Oh, wait, we're not doing the song yet. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was the song. I thought we were doing the full characters, the bit. Do That's it. Them play. Uh, this song is called Podcast and Pals. When, when you're asked, asked to a show and, and you, you got you know why. barely, you know no, him barely. barely. You, you know sit him on his couch, couch while Katie giggles, laugh. That's Katie, Katie. sweet <laughs> Katie. And <laughs> then you know you started <laughs> with <laughs> Ruffalo, <laughs> but you <laughs> go off <laughs> topic because <laughs> you <laughs> love <laughs> comic <laughs> books <laughs> and oh, wow, well, will it ever be the same? That was the best when they switch the tempo like that and they just get real. It's so joyful. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's when he did it and when you did it are now both fond memories for me because it's joy. Why would we not go for it? So fun. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. All right. So you, when your vision went yellow, how long did it take before it came back? I had a headache the rest of the day and I was, I was, Probably concussed. It was like my yeah. first concussion and felt like a little nauseous too. But did you go to the hospital? Event. No. No. No, man. Because <laughs> I'd love to have the I'm doctor a go like. Male. Uh, In a Western know, male, Julia, you don't go. Julia Louis <laughs> Dreyfus has a, has a house up here. I remember when I did this for JLD. <laughs> she thought she almost died too. She ended up using that on Pete Holmes' podcast. True that. <laughs> okay. You almost died and you didn't go to the doctor and you were probably concussed. Yeah. All right, let's look at the notes. Okay. Do you have a naked gun story? Yes. Hit it. Yours truly uh, has been an active SAG member since 1992. Um, the thing that got me uh, SAG, at that time SAG eligible, was um, I did a guest star for the reenactments of Unsolved Mysteries, 
which shot in Big Bear, my hometown where I was living. <laughs> Shut so up. You were on Unsolved re- Mysteries. Yeah, I was in one of the reenactments. And it was a really nice, it was like a Christmas episode about World War II, coincidentally. <gasps> and it was about this mother and her young son in a cabin in during like Battle of the Bulge in the wilderness. And it's Christmas Eve and there's a knock at the door and it's three American soldiers. And they're like, and the mother's like, come in, come in. Of course, we'll house you. We'll feed you. You can sleep here. You can slumber. And the son's taking it all him. His name's Fritz. That's who I played. And then an hour later, another knock. It's four German soldiers. And the mother says, we have American soldiers here. It is Christmas Eve. I will not have any fighting in my house. You leave your weapons outside. If you want, you can come in, have a warm sleep, have a delicious meal. But then you have to go. And, and they did. And these Germans and American soldiers broke bread at this in this little cabin in Belgium, I guess. You know, for, and... and um, and it was peaceful. And in the morning, the Germans told the Americans how to get back to their line, to the American line. And they shook hands and they split ways. Isn't that amazing? Like now in the, the phase I'm in, I'm like, can't believe I was so lucky to get to help tell that story. So Fritz, grown up, wanted to try to track down who those soldiers were. Did and he? And they found some of them. Yeah. Whoa. I know. Amazing. I love stories like that. It's, it was so, it was such a pleasant unsolved mystery. So this does connect yeah, in two ways. the mystery is like, and he's still yeah. out there. Her body hasn't been seen since. And so <laughs> Bob Stack, that's my uncle. It's my mom's uncle by marriage. He's the host? He's the host. He was the original Elliot Ness, and he's in Airplane. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. got the glasses. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's Don't Call Me Shirley? No, that's... No, that, that's... Yeah, exactly. Um, so... When I auditioned for that, knowing that my uncle's the host, there I'm like, I know you're feeling this in my hometown, but you know my uncle's Robert Stack. <laughs> I said that in the room, oh and the director, and they're like, we know Taryn. What do you do? You think that'll help you or something? And I was like, couldn't hurt. And they love telling that story. So through production, they're like, you know what this kid did? Couldn't um, hurt. Couldn't hurt. Couldn't hurt. You're the couldn't hurt kid. Precocious little obnoxious little fucker. What a fantastic. But that tale. got me my Taft Hartley right. That made me SAG eligible. And so then I went in an audition for Naked Gun 33 and a third. And it was to be like the Joe Mazzello part in Jurassic Park, like the little kid. Mm -hmm. But it's geriatric park. It's not dinosaurs. It's 80 foot tall old people with walkers. I remember this. (laughs) So I played the little boy in the thing. And that got me my SAG card. And I had a line. I go like, what was that? Did you hear that? And we look at the cups and it's shaking. And we look out the window and it's an 80 foot old man who smashes a Sam Neill look alike and we go ah! but in the movie they cut my line oh. and they and the director kept going Taryn Taryn it looks like you're smiling because I was having the time of my life because <laughs> I was like I'm on a Jurassic Park set I'm on a movie I get it like and they're like Taryn still looks like you're smiling okay you're really afraid <laughs> I've worked with a couple kid actors and that was a big thing yeah don't yeah. watch the show D- yeah <laughs> Yes, yeah. Which is such a terrible thing to tell a child. Uh, Stop enjoying the show. Exactly. No, be present. Wait, the set wasn't disappointing? That seems like it would be a deeply so disappointing. Really? Oh, it was so cool. It was at um it was at the the Raleigh studios that are across the street from Paramount. Uh-huh. And it's, they had a whole sound stage. And and ours was a our piece was a clip in like the fake Oscar Oscars. The the Climax, there's a bomb in an envelope at the Oscars. That's the third act of Naked Gun 33 and a third. And so they're showing clips of different movies. And there was a Mother Teresa musical clip. And the soundstage was half the set of Mother Teresa's wherever she's yes. healing people at that point. And then half was like the jungle outside the T-Rex cage of Jurassic Park. And they had the car that looked really similar to the SUV. Like, so magical, so fun. Wow. So I did that, and then I got to go to the premiere, and it was at uh, the Fox Theater in Westwood, and my Uncle Bob was like, You're, if you've seen Leslie, tell him Bob says hi. Like, go and say hi. And I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> and I go to the theater, and um, he's sitting in, like, the back, towards the back, and there's a line of people. You know, there's, like, people waiting to greet him, and I wait my turn, and I'm by myself, and I'm 12 or whatever, and my mom's saving our seats, and I finally get up to him, I go, Hey, hi, Mr. Nielsen. I'm Taryn. I'm I'm in this movie. My my uncle's Robert Stack, and he said he told me to say hi to you. So I'm just that's I'm saying hi, and it's been fun to be in the movie. And he goes, "What? What did he say? I couldn't hear a word he said." <laughs> and it took like all my courage to like say that. I'm like, Robert Robert Stack's my uncle. I'm Taryn. I'm I'm in this movie. <laughs> then he yelled at this old man. He goes, "Oh, oh, Bob, oh, great guy, great guy." Well. 
happy you're here. And I walk back in shame to my seat and I sit down. Mom goes, how'd it go? I go, fine. Fine, don't ask me about it. <laughs> it was embarrassing. And to Leslie Nielsen's credit, after the movie in the lobby, he saw me and he's like, hey, did you like the movie? Did you enjoy it? All right, well, great job. You know, very classy. This is no exaggeration, no hyperbole. The next week I'm at home watching Saved by the Bell or whatever, and a commercial comes on and Leslie Nielsen is the spokesperson for Hearing Aid. And I went, <laughs> and, and I completely forgave myself in that moment. I was like, oh. it wasn't me. Oh my God. <laughs> You're controlling the universe. <laughs> like, I, I thought it I, turns out this whole thing is for you. <laughs> what? Leslie Nielsen was so important to me because he, he didn't look like my father, but he looked enough like my father. Yeah. That I was like, that's my dad if my dad was only a silly bean. Mm. My dad would occasionally be a silly bean. Yeah. Funny guy. But this was like, this guy will do anything to make us laugh. And what is better than a grown man willing to make any Break you dancing laugh? as an umpire at a baseball game. Yeah. That Remember the guy that goes, hey, that's Nico Palazzo? Is that in the first one? It's in the first one. I don't remember. This is, I don't know why I'm telling, well, he, yeah. because he's breakdancing and he takes his mask off and it's, he's saying the national anthem is Nico oh, Palazzo. Oh, that's, okay. And the guy who stands up and goes, hey, that's Nico Palazzo is <laughs> okay. the okay. villain in uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Just a random little fact. It's, oh, it's, what's the, the guy's the, name? The, the rich kid. Lewis or, um, uh, Lewis? Hello, Pee Wee, Philip. Philip. Yeah, Philip, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I said two very different names, but I feel like I could make either one work. I loved it. <laughs> Can I ask you, and please forgive me if you've been asked this a million, but it seems to me that the King George part in Hamilton would be a snooze because you have to wait so long. It is easy as pie, yeah. so rewarding. But you have to be in, like, if it was just the first one, you go like, let's go get sushi. There's, a nut, there's several. Yeah, I had the timing out, it worked out once there's there's two in the first half and then one in the, the second half second act uh um, <laughs> we're dumb dumbs i call it halves. halves yeah i know i do i fluctuate between sports and and oh and i see what all was the happening. time yeah halftime or intermission yeah, i just yeah. took my girls to an angel city game Cute. on monday it was great it was so fun and, <laughs> and my oldest was like is there an intermission and I was like, the seventh inning, <laughs> seventh inning stretch is yeah. an intermission. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Inter intermission. Uh, but the first, yeah. So, it, but there was, it's like 25 minutes between the first two songs and then a little bit shorter. And then you're in the ensemble at the very end for the last two and a half songs or something like that. It was great. I was Oh, you're in overjoyed. the chorus. Yeah. I see. become an ensemble member for that. Wait, um, in the costume? No, in in the plain clothes, oh. sort of colonial, yeah, colonial beige. Oh, every part of the buffalo. Yeah, exactly. I never num, considered num, num, num. that uh, King George is taking that makeup off and joining the regular during group. the bullet. You know, aims his head at the sky, and so you're there sitting for that, oh. and then you're part of the who die, who lives, who dies, who tells your story. History. Oh, I'm sorry. Lin Manuel you Miranda. Me. Lin Manuel Miranda <laughs> tells your story. Yeah, that's kind of a self-serving song. <laughs> Who will write that's, the musical? That's all right. If it's that good, yeah, you've earned a little. You've little earned bit. it, baby. Yeah, yeah. Lin Manuel. Yeah. No harm, no foul, yeah. man. That's okay. Keep on, keep but on that on. is talk about John Wick energy. That is a type of confidence where you're like, not only am I writing a musical, but the musical itself acknowledges how great the musical totally, is. Totally. Totally. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and did anything ever go goofy? I mean, live theater. The only time that, cause the great thing about the King role is like, there's so much anticipation for it. And by the time I joined the show, the album was out. It was the biggest thing in the world. It was like, I was like, I can't believe I'm Charlie in the chocolate factory yeah. with the gold. Like this is insane. And you come out, and a message from the king, a message from the king. And, like, you're there, and spotlight, and the crowd goes wild. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. I did, I did 99 performances. I almost made it to 100, and I called out sick once, and I regret wow. it to this day. Wow. But there was a Sunday matinee <laughs> where I came out, and it was just a message from the king, a message from the king. Silence. <gasps> just silence. Just a, just a very... Polite, polite, thoughtful, watching audience, you know, and it threw me a little bit, but I got through it and I got back off stage and everyone was like, what did you do? 
Like they'd never were you seen making, that happen. Were you making swastika face? Not, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Somehow. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So that was really fun. And then they do a great thing called Ham for Ham, which is um ten dollars. There's a ten dollar uh uh, lottery and you the first two rows are for 10 bucks but they do no that edu ham is what i'm thinking of every first saturday something like that all public schools in the new york area greater new york area have to study and do a a presentation about the american revolution they come each school has a winner that represents their school and performs a five minute piece could be musical a scene a sketch or whatever they do it on the stage they go have lunch and they come back and we do a matinee performance just for them. Whoa. So cool. It's the coolest thing. And wow. they, and it's a different energy. It's a different very vibe. Excited, different. It's so excited, yeah. very vocal, very, but really, you know, roxious, but so fun. And that's where I flubbed the best. Cause the song, it's the same song three times with different lyrics. Yeah. So occasionally be like, and I was pretty good about it like, it seems harder. There's a trickiness the to it. Is like, the same. Yeah, 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 Especially yeah. Especially if you get into like a fugue state and you're just on yeah. autopilot and you're like, wait, which one is this? Yeah. Oceans Rise, Empire's Fall sets up the same verse, but you have to remember where you are in the show each right, time. Right, you know? right. But I just rolled my R once. I was like, remember we made an arrangement when you went away. And I just in my head was like, what are you doing? That's a big roll. And completely lost. I was like, went away. And you hear... <laughs> You hear 1,300 high school students go, oh, damn. <laughs> and I just go. Because you're blanking? Yep. And I go, I'm your man. <laughs> like, I just said nothing in that space till that point. It got me back on track. <gasps> it was splendid. It was really splendid. I was like, remember we made an arrangement when you went away. I'm dead. I'm your man. <laughs> I'm dead. He was great. He was really great. I'm your man. It'll be now what I say. <laughs> yeah, I'm your if man. If I'm blanking. Yeah. I'm your <laughs> man. Wow. Yeah. Okay, Ruffalo. Ruffalo. Back to the Ruffalo of it all. <laughs> what a fan. You remember your bicorn. <laughs> I was told this story, not even by Ruffalo himself, but I was at this game night, and they're like, I heard crazy story. Ruffalo does this play. He's getting all the plaudits in the world. It's basically what gets him his first job. Everybody's like, this is the show to see. It's him and two female roles. It's three-person play, and they're eating it up. And and one day, uh, one, one of the performances, stage manager comes back and goes, Bill Murray's in the house. And Mark goes, oh, man, I'm going to give it. Bill Murray's about to get the best performance of my best role right now. And he puts it all out there. And, and as I, this person who told it to another person who told it to me says, Mark knew he nailed it. Mark, it was like, it was everything he wanted to be more, every tear, every ounce of sweat, spittle. It was all out there. Come backstage after the show, Bill comes to say hi, says to one woman, that was maybe the best performance I've ever seen on stage. Thank you. Says to the next one, I am not a crier, but your moment in the show made me outwardly cry. I couldn't believe it. Thank you. Thank you. And he looks to Mark Ruffle and goes, you're up and walks out. It's almost like a sorbet, that story. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so unexpected, but it's kind of like it's tart. Like, There's tart. I don't, There's sweetness I don't to it. There's love tart. that word. There's no real good. Yeah. I, but I, I like love word. a story. It subverts expectation. Yeah. Perfectly. Yeah. And he's he the celebrity it. who gets away with that. If you want to say, or, or, or that it's not like you're not immediately furious. You're yeah. kind of like, is he, is that funny? Is that, did he do it? Is it, but he does I, weird stuff, right? I think the right? reason why you can call, you can call, I'm not saying I'm calling it. Okay. I'm saying the reason you can call fair play on it yeah. is it's because it's a destruction of ego story. Yes. So it's a guy yes. who's already, his train has already come in. Mm -hmm. Ruffalo's doing great. Yep. He And he kills it. Yes. And I, Obviously, Bill Murray loved it. For sure. It's not, he, so he's high I status. I think that that's true, yes. So the joke is to then imagine if you said, yes. you're a, uh, yeah. and walked out. Yes. Because, and what, what I, th I mean, I, I don't even need to analyze it anymore. I think that's <laughs> why you can enjoy that story. Yes, okay. Tell me a name drop, Terry and Killam story. 
Who? Oh, a, a name droppy. Like, you know, I mean, you're on Saturday. What's the end? <laughs> Saturday evening mm-hmm. happening. Saturday evening post. Um, Saturday, you were on evening, Saturday post. evening post. Yes, I was in the post. I was in the Ron Howard film, The Post. I mean, you had to have. I, I remember um, Mulaney's story when he was with Mick Jagger and yeah. he was like trying to, they were writing a song and he goes, it, 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 Mulaney obviously would tell it better, but he was like, we need something that rhymes with like more. Yeah. And John goes, score? And he goes, no. Like, he's really, no. And then Mulaney goes, a door? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Amazing. to us, equal. Like, Amazing. They're both equal, but for some reason, Mick Jagger's like, yeah. He knows the code. And loves it. Mick Jag- um, I got a good Mick Jagger one, ooh. which was, it's not like shocking or anything, but it just is like, this is arguably the biggest rock star in the world. Yeah. And he's hosting a comedy show. He owes everybody nothing. Well, that's what Mulaney said too. He talks like Alexa. Like he talks to people like you talk to Alexa. He goes, <laughs> Diet Coke. Di- that, that's Mulaney's <laughs> bit. He just goes, Diet Coke. And uh, Mulaney well, goes, Do you say please to Alexa? And you know what? I do now. You do. I Aww. do now. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. You know, um, it's those little touches. Well, my I my experience was like. I I was not one to try to buddy up. I did like that's it just is not in my nature. It's like if we work on something, we'll collaborate, we'll get to know each other that way. If not, I'm not gonna yeah. sing and dance for you. Yeah. Um, but I was in a sketch with him and I was impressed by how committed he was, like how he was trying because he's going like, all right. He's playing literally like a businessman going out <laughs> for sushi after a meet or whatever. You know, like they're out on the town. He's like, All right, I've got to find my voice. I've got to find I gotta find my voice. What is what's this character's name? Tom. 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 But if I do this, I don't really sound like a Tom. Do I sound like a Tom? I sound more like a Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> he beckons the writer over and they change the character name to Kevin to help Mick Jagger find his voice. Oh, he character didn't keep voice. looking for Tom. No, Tom is He stopped. He at found Kevin. the voice. Kevin eat I'm more of a Kevin. Kevin. I don't know that the character name is uttered outside of like the opening exposition lines of that sketch, but that was his process. Like that is like, you're a rock star, man. Well, like, how yeah. you do anything is how you do everything. Right. I guess so. I yeah. mean that. Yeah, I, exactly. I love, right. I'm not surprised. Yeah. It's like people at that level tend to, somebody told me like Will Smith. Oh, that it was James Corden. Mm. He was like Tom Cruise, Will Smith. He's like, when they're doing something, it's the only thing in the world they're doing. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. and that's the, the number one thing you see yes. with like highly, highly functioning people. Totally. Not yeah. To, I believe I've seen it. Right? Yeah. Well, any, any, I gave you a Mick Jagger one, right? What, okay. what came to mind? I mean, for me, like my biggest, like, oh crap is, is, is Jim Carrey just cause yeah. he was it and, and still is quite honestly, like in terms yeah. of like comedic influences in my life. It's funny you say him because- uh, ben Schwartz was, uh, you know, Sonic. And yes. I was like, what was that like? I, I, I know, I think he was on set acting with him, but mm. he was like, he's not doing it as a joke at all. He's Dr. Robotnik in the same way Mick Jagger is Kevin. Oh, amazing. Like he's oh, doing cool. it a hundred percent. Yes. That's all that exists. There's no yes. liar, liar. It's just, I'm Dr. Robotnik today. And he, and he delivered. And he's all in. Yeah. yeah. And it's I, the only way to not be embarrassed. Isn't it funny that like, Playing it cool is more likely to make you embarrassed, but if yeah. you really do it, yeah. Although I can see you thinking of count- counterpoints to that, because it is true. Only because I feel like Bobby told it on this podcast, the Ted Danson story. The Ted Danson came back. For, I think he told it on this one. I think I don't know, but Ted Danson, they're shooting Mr. Mayor, and like Ted's doing a big scene, and then he comes back to video. Did you just mention Mr. Mayor? Fucking synchronous. Oh, funny. Yeah, Who and he comes back and show? he sits in the chair. It's Ted Danson, very accomplished. He goes. <sighs> Isn't acting embarrassing? Yeah. <laughs> and I fantastic. love that so much because that's much more how I am on set. I know what like, you mean. You I know? was speaking of Street Fighter. There's a Street Fighter movie that has the guy from American Pie in it. Uh, Chris Klein. Chris Klein. And he, yeah. And 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 the girl from Smallville. Yes. And she's Chun Li, Legend of Chun Li. And Neil is McDonough is M. Bison. Yes. I, From Band of Brothers, World uh, War II. Oh wow! Everything is everything. We just fell into a real everything everywhere all at once. Yes, we did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, I was Chris Klein is. 
I was like, there is a. No, I'm not even gonna say it. his his. Oh, oh, that that movie. Uh huh. You don't have to be stoned. I don't. I don't really smoke pot anymore. Yeah. You can watch that movie like you're stoned, and you'll enjoy the fuck out of it. Okay. It's okay. Cool. So. I don't want to say it's bad. It's just yeah. earnest and going for it. Okay. And it just kind of like the Mark Ruffalo story. It shows you that like sometimes swagger is the stupidest thing in the world. Yeah, and Chris Klein is like, this guy walks through raindrops. And you're just like, beautiful, poor guy. But that poor like, guy. Maybe it would have worked, but right. not in this movie. My favorite thing online, maybe top three easily is his audition for Mamma Mia. I'm no, dead. it's not. It, it, I'm li- dead. I want to be on the record. Like I'm the dead. casting office that leaked this. Can we watch should it? Should burn in hell. Can we watch it? Chris, how long is it? It very, very. It, it, it's worth watching. It's. I mean, edit it out if you want. But Chris Klein's Mama Me audition, because I relate to it so much. But it is not a great audition. He's very vulnerable. It's a oh. singing audition. Oh no. Oh no! And like shame on the casting office Which for releasing this. It? It's the top one. the The bottom one's like a silly response that he made. I'm, oh, he knows. He, he knows. It's it's. I relate to it. Oh, it's I, so familiar. It 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 makes me it makes me laugh. It's the stuff of nightmares. But too. it makes me love him. It yes. makes me love him. Yeah. It makes me go, bro. Thank you. I'm sorry that this happened to you and that you're the face of it. And it is hilarious. And, and it, we missed a couple of marks for yes, sure. Yes. But a hundred times have I been there. For sure. It's also a movie. Here, I'll be his agent, not yeah. as a character, but his yeah. agent yeah, should yeah, yeah, yeah. say, like, yeah. it's a movie. You'll re you'll pre-record it. It's not live. Yes. Like you'll nail it, they'll fix it, it'll be fine. 100%. He still could have booked it from that. Totally. But can I just say nothing to me feels more show business than than oh, the bad part of show business? Because when you're feeling virile and ready to go and mm -hmm. confident and on the money and bam, you hit your mark and you nail it, nothing yes. better. Same situation, but you, your mojo's off. Like something's wrong, physically wrong, emotionally wrong, whatever it is, you go out and it's wrong. That to me, what that feels like is being in that audition. You're starting yes. to glisten. Yes. You're wearing a V-neck t-shirt with a necklace and a leather jacket. <laughs> yes, yes. And you're doing the scene and there's this nice little reprieve yes. from having to sing this difficult song. Uh -huh. And then dong, dong, like oh, the piano in kicks back in. And you have to be like, I told Wait, you smoking what? was my only vice. Like, <laughs> you have to go back in. Uh, the yeah, show and, must go on. And to add to that, a little drizzle of... He's above everybody. Yeah. You're I have to act down and sing down, down to you. I've never you like you sing down in a little to them. in a room. If you're on stage and you're a rock star, you sing down. Yeah. But the No. It's the angle of the And, and, I, I, and it's it's also uh, a stupid like the song is kind of stupid. It's ABBA, man. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. It's not like super cool. It's, it's like not emotive. Smoking was it's my <laughs> only vice is not like a cool line. No, to it's hit. played by a guy with like a bleach blonde He Man cut and purple sunglasses <laughs> and two Norwegian women. That's how that song is sung. That's the only way it should be sung. <laughs> and this poor man was forced to sing it. But he became an avatar for all of us because oh, it's so true. In this very office, I, I did a singing audition. And if you saw, it was, I, look, I didn't send it. It was a self tape. Yeah, so I didn't send great. it until I felt good about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is there anything more vulnerable no. than singing in earnest? No. 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 I did, I did In Summer by Olaf. Oh, great. By Olaf. By, by I think, I think by it is. By Olaf. I think <laughs> In Summer by Olaf. <laughs> uh, uh have you were about to tell me a story though, Jim? Jim, sorry, man. I, I Jim, just I, I stopped interviewing you halfway through. <laughs> now, now we're just hanging That's out. It's great. I love it. Okay, good. I friggin' love it. Um, Jim hosted my first season. I got a sketch on with him. We played these like possessed animatronic things that like in a creepy carnival. So it's like physical comedy. Mm. And then when the bit's done, you lower behind a wall. So there's like a little plywood wall that you scratch behind. And it's just like that first time of like doing it at dress, got a great response. I crouched down, Bill haters to my right. And he's like, it's kind of great, man. And then like look over and it's just my hero. Yeah. Just crouch going like, you oh. know, is the best. It was the yeah. best. It was the best. And I was like, what, what else? Yeah. What else? What else? Um, 
And so like that was really happy, but he's such an explorer. He's constantly like trying to improve and pitch. And with SNL, it's like, okay, well, we're going live at 1130. So why don't we try it the way it's written? And then what? So I think for the writers, there was some struggle there on, yeah. on that end. Yeah. And, and at the 40th, at SNL 40th, he was in Celebrity Jeopardy. I did like a Christoph Waltz impression. He was doing Matthew McConaughey, but it's, they had like a revolving door and you've got Farrell and you've got Norm MacDonald and you've got Daryl Hammond. you like, you've got everybody. And Jim was rehearsing it and going through it again and again and again and again and taking up time, you know, and, and, yeah. and trying to make it the best it could be. Yeah. But it was like, he was getting more time doing that than anybody else. Right. And then on the show, he went up a little bit. Like you wouldn't even notice, but there was a car, there's a flub or whatever, right? And a, and very similar to the Chris Klein thing, mm -hmm. like that humbling was so beautiful where it was like he worked so hard to make it the precise thing. Yeah. And then the fickle that's the fickleness of SNL, like a fumble. And backstage, he was like, Yeah, man, you know, uh, you love it. You want to get it back, but but that's the beauty of the show. You know, it's just out there. And I took that, I seized that moment yeah, yeah. in that like vulnerable, like, yes, you're human too, but you're still my idol. Yeah. <laughs> and I went, I, uh, dude, it's fine. And that's cool to hear you say, I have to tell you my whole life has just been like mimicking you on the playground to make friends. Yeah. Like that's yeah. what you are to me. Like I, dressing up as you at yeah. Halloween, three Halloween's in you're a row. Like, me, yeah. and he was like, Oh man, I, Oh, that's awesome. That's how you, yeah, yeah I, I hear you. I hear you. Cause I look that down good. and this comes full circle. He goes, I, cause I look, I, I feel the same way. You know, I look down that hall and I go, that's bill fucking Murray. Wow. And I was like, this is the best night of my life. That, <laughs> this is the best night and of my bill life. Murray walks by and goes, you're, and a, you're, you're an, a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, a couple things. One, what I love about that story, so I just taped my special a couple weekends ago, and the first special, the, thank you, the, yeah. the air conditioning was off. I bet the people that were there were like, it was still great, but to me, I was so wet. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is unusable. Okay. And then the second show, thankfully, was magic and great. Cool. Probably awesome. even informed by the fact that we didn't have two shows to pull from. So yes. I was like, it's all on the line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. brought me to life. Yeah. But the first show really got me back in touch with that humility. Mm -hmm. And you forget how precious it is, mm -hmm. how precious low level suffering can even be. Yes. Like you go off stage and you're like, that is not, I've been focusing on this for months to yeah. the point where like, I won't even tell you how obsessive I get where I'm like, how can I make sure I'm in the best mood possible? It sounds like I do drugs. Mm. I just mean like, <laughs> I'm going to take fiber like this time. So mm. I'll have a good poop before the show, all that stuff. Great. Which worked by the way. Yeah. Nice. All this stuff. And then I sweat my way through and I'm like, I'm like, this is unusable. And, and, but it brought me back in touch with everybody's suffering. So when I watch that Chris Klein, mm -hmm. I'm actually relating. Oh, absolutely. And then hu uh, humiliate, mm -hmm. humble, and human are all from the same uh, root, yeah. which I believe is soil, a uh, human coming from the soil, going low to the soil, all that sort of stuff. And I could be wrong about that, but isn't that oh, wow. fun that it's not just, part of being human it's like the root of being human is that we're these divine elegant dancers painters writers speakers yes we love we create all this stuff yes. but the core of us is you're always one bad lunch <laughs> and a bad night's sleep yeah. away from i told you smoking was my yes. own and that, that connects us yeah it's actually gorgeous so totally. your story so the point is what did i say about chris klein he could have still done it because those movies, you pre-record the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Jim was doing it on SNL, and that's the purity of that show is like, yeah. and now it exists. Yes. So like it it counts. Yes. And we include the humiliation. Yes. And that and that's why stand-up can be exciting and why life theater can be exciting too. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they they edit stuff. You know? On SNL? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you mean? If, eventually. Like eventually, like if they re-release anything. Oh, I see. Or if they, you know, something... Uh, taboo or shocking or whatever right. happened on the east coast they'd cut it out for the west coast oh you know? what a shame yeah, yeah yeah but you i i thought i was done with those but i'm stewie on the set of uh the kid show on family guy yeah he goes to teletubbies okay stewie wants to go to where they where they shoot a teletubbies type yeah, yeah, show yeah. and he realizes it's just guys in costumes on a set funny and it like breaks his funny, heart funny, funny. you just did that to me a little oh, bit sorry no i loved it I have to grow it's up. It's very minimal. It is mostly live. I have to learn. <laughs> no, don't don't walk it back. I also just was mentioning Jim because I 
we're almost done, so we don't have to open up this whole can of worms. But like, I, I my relationship with my parents can be so complicated mm -hmm. because I love them, and because it, sometimes we just don't gel in, in the way that I know we both want to. I was watching this talk that Jim Carrey was giving as part of an Eckhart Tolle event. It was on Eckhart Tolle's YouTube, this Jim Carrey thing. And I'd seen it a million times, but I watched it again. And he talked about with his mom, uh, he was like, she was depressed and maybe even bipolar. I don't know. And he was like, I thought if I could be special, I would make her life mm -hmm. meaningful. Mm -hmm. He's like, because it, look, you, you, your life isn't meaningless. You made me and I'm extraordinary. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, oh God, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. shaving with the sharpest razor. Yeah. Like I just, I feel like I need cold water on my face, but I was like, what another, like he's not only a performer, but he'll be vulnerable in that way. Mm -hmm. It really gave language to, there's a burden. And again, we're telling imperfect stories in an imperfect world and everybody did the best they could. And there is a burden to being like a special shiny sun. Yes. That, that is unspoken. And yeah. there's this Carl Jung quote where it's like the greatest burden you can put on a child is the unfulfilled dream of the parent. Oh, boy. And But you should also keep that in your, in your you know. Craw for my kids. In your craw for you because yeah. there is time for sacrifice. I say no to things and I yeah. am around and I, I love my balance. And it's valuable that uh, her mom is going after her things and her dad is going after her things. Yeah. And it's also a wonderful privilege that so many people we know are just doing their thing. Mm -hmm. Like they overcame resistance and they're going for it. Yes. So that's really valuable. I think my poor mom, and I mean that sincerely, I don't think that was explained. I don't know if that was even, if she had enough time and leisure to even consider sure. that. She yeah. was just doing what she could right. to be the best mom she could. She was made from a mom. 20, 30 she years earlier. She was made from a mom. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. like the movies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Written by the 80s bullies. Exactly. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to share that because it was I so I love that. No, it's me. beautiful. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on the meaning of life? Do you have any vibe one way or the other? I will. Yeah, I mean, I will. I'm, I'm vibe. very ag agnostic. Um, I, I, I'm pretty strong in, you know, I think when we die, we decompose and that's it. And, and where that might instill fear, concern, or stress, it really makes life and every moment. So Matt, so beautiful. Yeah. What, what a lottery win it is to breathe, walk, exist, yeah. uh, be conscious. Of and by this. the way, can I add to that? Sure. You don't have to be Taryn Killam on SNL. Any moment that you drop into fully and really absolutely like a like a visiting alien yes. even just driving in traffic if you can do that you see the potential for almost anything to like move all the impediments out of the way and be fully alive and that's the gift totally is what i hear you saying too. yeah that, so it's not just your specialness it's just like oh my no, god we're breathing. I, i'm not talking about any uh statistical or, or surface aspects of my life specifically i mean to be is a miraculous gift yeah. and so the meaning of life, I think, is like, you know, uh, uh, sp spread happiness and joy and try not to hurt others. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is this has been a lot of fun for me. You know, I don't want to be Michelangelo. I thought I did. I don't. Yeah. Uh, I never. I know Michelangelo's. They are exhausted. Oh, God. Yes. And I don't know if I believe it. Grow up. Hey, Michelangelo. Grow up. Grow the fuck up. Yeah. And hey, Casey, Casey Jones. Lighten up. Lighten up. Lighten and hey, up, Leo. Bro. Not every moment has to be an opportunity to be 100%. We're a team here, buddy. No yeah. I in team. Yeah. And hey, Raph. Raph. Maybe lighten up a little maybe, bit. Maybe maybe kind of clean your room, you know, focus yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Donnie? Does coolness need rudeness? <laughs> I I don't know if they're mutually exclusive, you know? Can I ask you a sincere question? Always. When AI is ruling the planet. <laughs> yes. And they have access to everything we ever made. Okay. Do you think for real? Okay. That there will be like a deification almost of Donatello because he does machines. <laughs> like, like a sincere, like this was the best of them. Uh-huh. No. <laughs> 
in all sincerity, in all earnestness, no. Yeah. He will have a place on top of AI Mountain. Yes. Where he is their their, their servant. <gasps> He's their their, you know what I mean? Like I like he he is there for on display for all to see. And he to has to him? live with it. Well, because he can do them. So yeah. he's he is the closest, you know, organic creature to an AI and there to problem solve for rusty wires. Yes. I don't do Solar machines. Solar panels. Cool and rude. Yeah, you're cool and rude. Um, and he will be hard at work because it is his obsession and his passion, but occasionally he'll look down from the mountain with shame and horror and like look what you did. Look at what you have begotten. He should have seen it coming, the technodrome. He's he's the guy in Terminator 2. <gasps> Miles Bennett Tyson. Miles Bennett Tyson. Very good Miles Bennett Tyson. <laughs> Very good Miles Bennett Tyson. Very good Miles Bennett that movie. Tyson. That movie. I think we're the same. Yeah. <laughs> Are we the same thing? Are we the same thing? Because Terminator 2 and Batman. It went Batman right to Terminator 2. Terminator 2 first rated our movie I saw in the theater. And I, and, I can't and believe the it's rated R because he, you know, what a genius mechanism that they that he says you can't kill anybody. Terminator 1 is like a fucking snuff movie. Yes. Yes. It's like a gritty eight yes. millimeter fucking nightmare. Yes. Terminator 2, Jim, Jimmy Cameron comes in and goes, I know how to fix this. He pairs up with a boy, and the boy says, don't kill anyone. Oh. And next thing you know, we're jizzing Titanic. Oh, my God. Right? I, I My memory <laughs> of walking out of the theater, this is like a big, big development, is doing this walk in the parking lot. Can you saw stop? Saw it with my, <laughs> of the, and go, and just humming. <laughs> Like this is me in the parking lot, and I went with my my best friend at the time and his dad. And his dad goes like, oh, "Taryn, you sure do love singing the music from everything." I and I went. Now I know why I cry. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you that whole time I was freaking out because when I saw it. I was walking, I vivid memory, walking down the hallway at my school. Mm. And I we were looking for somebody. And I did the scanning. Scanning walk. <laughs> They're in the locker. <laughs> uh. And I got to the end of the hall. <laughs> Susan, my teacher, yes. said, you looked like the Terminator robot. And I'm like, shut the fuck up, Susan. Like, <laughs> like in my mind, I was like, don't see me. Like, I thought, like you, that you could just do it and no one would notice. I am the Terminator. <laughs> Robert Patrick. Ah, oh, so good. His Did first... you watch Light and Magic, that documentary, Light and Magic, about ILM and the founding of it? And No. Oh, Disney Plus, Light and Magic. Uh, watch it right now in front of me. Um, <laughs> it's but they talk about that that movie Terminator Two, the, the way it advanced with CG and the liquid T one thousand, and and Dennis Murin talks about him moving through the bars. Yeah, and he says in the documentary something to the effect of like, to this day, I watch that shot and I go, that's not possible. That's not possible. It's a combination of so many elements blending seamlessly the physical thing, Robert's person, the liquid CG coming that that starts as a tangible person into the liquid, into the tangible yeah, person. He's like, yeah, yeah. I don't know how we did that. And then his gun catches and uh, the cigarette tink, tink. falls. It's, it's incredible. So Robert good. Patrick, fun fact, practiced not blinking when he shot his gun because he was like, why would a robot blink? Cool. Isn't that cool? That's and if you watch so it, he doesn't cool. blink. He does a couple times. Have you seen this boy? And then, uh, and then he's <laughs> that's Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Yeah, yeah. I switched. I switched we here. are the same. <laughs> we are the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But you, you. Oh, that was fun. You yeah. know what I get obsessed with too is in the Matrix when uh, Twitch goes, not like these. 
Not like this. <laughs> That's another good death. <laughs> so many good deaths. Not like this. So Not like this. <laughs> Actually, what a great way to die. Joey pants. Just to be unplugged in the Matrix. I guess. That would be a great death. I guess. That's the aneurysm of... Okay. The, you're just off. You'd rather go slow? No. No, I, I, I actually... I forever. <laughs> I, oh, um, I'm sorry. I didn't no, know that I was a No, I think you're choice. right. In your, in your sleep. Yeah, in your sleep, right? Uh, this is... Do you, I kick want, me out I want anytime blend. you want. I want to blend. I want to be in a hospital bed. I want the time to know I'm dying. I yes. want to say my okay. piece. I want to uh, get in touch with the experience. Yes. And then... After I've had all of that on my last night, I want the not like this. Uh, just, yeah. The first the first time that I was overwhelmed by how much my child loves me, I I my kids are my everything. Really? Because no, not the same. No, We're I've not talked the same to your then. kids. Oh, <laughs> they no, feel no, different. That, the riff was different. Well, <laughs> no, how old are your um, kids? Uh 14 and 8. Oh my God! Yeah, there's a separation. Started there's a, we started early. Oh, that's not what I yeah. picked up on. Yeah, I yeah. just was picking up the that earliness. You were early. It's nice. Forty five. She's out of the house. Wow. <laughs> wow. You let first time I took him out for a daddy daughter date. The fourteen year old at this time is probably eight, seven or eight. I'm gonna die and, at this and, story. And and she goes and she's funny. She's very curious and she's very. Uh, does not suffer fools, right? So we're eating, and she's like, got her like ice cream sundae. She's like, Dad, how do you want to die? And I went like, Oh, I did the parent thing of like, Oh, long time from now, long time. She's like, No, but like how? And I was like, We don't need to worry about that. And she's like, But how do you want to do it? Like, how do you want to? And I'm like, Well, I think, again, many years from now, very. Uh, peacefully maybe we're at a like a family property in canada we have stuff there maybe at the house and i can tell i'm sick and you're there both my girls and meet your families if you choose to have families if you have the, everybody's there we celebrate we look through pictures we watch videos or something we laugh and when i feel it's close you know mommy will be with me and maybe you girls come and are laying on the bed and i'll close my eyes <laughs> she's gone from like I don't want you to die! <laughs> and start sobbing in the middle of a Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. And I, <laughs> like, oh, I'm such an idiot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You asked, you, you entrapped me. You tricked me. Yeah, 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 but yeah. I saw her really conceive of what it was and how I, like, what I mean to her. Yeah. And it overwhelmed. It was overwhelming. But <laughs> I, mean, I think that story's an A. Plus. I see no, I see no mistakes there. Yeah. Yeah, I I do love it because it was like, yeah. what if I told the full story? And she's like, I hope it's tomorrow. It's Matt Goldich <laughs> has this great joke. This uh, comedian, great guy named Matt Goldich. Great guy, great guy, Matt great Goldich. Great guy, best guy, both sides. Oh, <laughs> see, that's different. See, it's lower. Mine, yeah, it's down it's here. A bit very, lower. Really? I mean, J, uh, John, James Austin Johnson. He's got he's got the gruff. He, oh, he doesn't uh, know. Uh, he doesn't like this. A little uh, uh, Scooby Doo. I mean, Scooby Doo. Scooby, -Doo. Scooby Doo. Don't. Um, he's just, leprechaun, he's just crazy leprechaun, good. Leprechaun, condom. Put on a leprechaun, don't want to have a baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but another comedian who's great. Oh, Matt who, Goldich. Yeah. He has this great joke. I hope he doesn't mind me saying. He goes, my wife, my wife uh, said to me, uh, this is a great Matt Goldich, actually. <laughs> I had a dream last night that you died. And uh, I'm like, um, in the future, I'd prefer if you refer to those as nightmare. <laughs> Isn't that a great joke? <laughs> so that's Phenomenal. you. You exactly. got you got the right exactly. Response. I got the nightmare. Yeah. What a beautiful story. Well, I'm yeah. so glad you had babies. You're such a thanks, man. Such a Me great too. man. And I just thanks, touched your, your front Thank jelly. you. Thank you. I'm so thrilled that you did the pod. Thank Happy you. To be here. Thank you for having me. I'll never forget that. Be prit. Be prit. But you're the more bad than that. Bradley. The Bradley Pitt. How special is that? I love him. How special? Do you do you watch Brad Dave? Pitt. Dave. The show Dave. That's another show I should watch. Is it good? Yes. Really? Yes. Listen to my list of shows. Okay. The Bear. Okay. The New Party Down. Yes. Yes. Great. I, just, I haven't seen, seen that it. one. I haven't heard either either way, but I love it. The first one. Yep. Light and Magic on Disney Plus from you. Yes. And Dave. Because we just finished Beef. Oh, how is that? 10 out of 10. Oh, great. Okay. Like, I'll take it. It's not succession. Okay. Meaning it's not trying to be succession. Sure. But what succession is. Mm-hmm. 
it is for what it is. Okay, the Meaning quality, it's, yeah. it's that level, quality acting, okay. writing, directing, cool. cinematography. It's perfect. Damn, okay, it's great. perfect. Thank you. And deeply satisfying in how it resolves. It resolves, cool. So it's not like, yeah, it kind of fizzles out at the right, end. Right, right, right. So I think it's a masterpiece. Wow. Yeah, All Netflix. Right. I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you, do you watch The Great? What's this? The Great is my favorite show on TV right now. Tell me whatever, what? It is L. <laughs> L. Fanning and Nicholas Holt. She plays. It's the story What's of Catherine on? the Great on Hulu. Oh, it's about a woman. Yes. You just hear me deleting it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Great on Hulu. The Great is the third season just came out. Okay, it's so. it's the same author. It, the showrunner is the guy who wrote the favorite, the the um, Emma Emma Stone film and Olivia Coleman. Oscar nominated the favorite. I'm a lot of so many, lady names. Too many girl names. Yeah. And when it's, does a man come in? So the story Nicholas can Holt's move really forward. Cool and funny oh, okay, 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 okay. He plays okay, okay. Alexander oh, okay, Jr., okay, okay, Russian okay, leader. Okay, There's okay, a lot okay, of Russian okay, dudes okay. around. <laughs> JK. Hondo percent JK. JK. I don't know why it came out like that. Uh, okay, so The Great. Okay, yeah. so watch Beef, and I'll watch The yes. Great. And I'll watch, did you watch The Bear? Somebody told me The Bear is great. I haven't seen The Bear. I hear it in your voice that it's only okay. Not... It's uh, not really for me. Mm, Fuck. Because when a show ends. Yeah. You got to fill real, the hole. Especially when you have a baby. Like that's that special time. What are the we? It's 845. What are Keep we doing? Where going, are we going to? Ending where we began. Okay. Since having a daughter and I, I'm like a 70, 30 feminine, masculine person. Anyway, mm. as I get older, that gets, I get more masculine, which just means more rigid, <laughs> <laughs> more rigid and, and <laughs> angry. But when I'm, and I love being a dad more than anything, and I love being a husband more than anything, and there's just a lot of female energy, and a lot mm -hmm. of times at the end of the day, that's when I'm like, I have to watch. What's that one with Josh Brolin where the bodies are in the walls? <laughs> it's a... S uh, Sicario? Sicario. Yeah. I, I remember yeah. I saw Sicario when it was in the theaters. I was like, that was okay. And now I'm like, I have to watch oh, Sicario. Really? Oh, I love Sicario. It's crazy. Benicio at that family table, at that dinner table. Chills right now. <sighs> chills you know who benicio's like brad Lock. he's doing brad yeah oh or brad's doing him right or there's just a type of dude there's a there's, there's a bone structure lip yeah eye narrowness thing that's yeah similar. is this it but they also Am make big, you know you've got you got uh is this it you like dugs bet you bet you bet you later get a try go between for the big fella there's that and then there's give me a kiss kai saga Give me the fucking keys, guys. I don't want to about to, to hook it with the dysentery. Uh, fucking, fucking flip your shit for real, man. So, like, they do that, right? They do a similar thing, too. <laughs> Fun. You don't go anywhere to jump stone. I want you at some point <laughs> to text me when it hits you that I'm right that Macaulay Culkin okay. and Brad Pitt are doing something similar. Okay. Because I can't explain it to you today, but a day is coming in soon, my friend. Right. Ma'am, I'm eight years old. Do you think I'd be here by myself? I don't think so. That's it. Right. Yeah. That's, that's Brad Pitt. Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's a cool right. way of talking. I don't think. Yeah. That's like yeah. Which is quiet. Yes. Denzel too. Is that that's yeah, you? Yeah, that's yeah, you. Yeah. That's you. All, All right. right. All right. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Young man. I just steal Jay's, yeah. Jay is like I steal Jay is the I technician steal... where you close your eyes and you're like, it, is it Jay or the person? You know, Facts. it's like it's crazy. No, it's crazy. Jay. When he was on, we just did impressions for three hours. It was fucking, <laughs> or meaning he did. It was incredible. Yeah. I like doing them, but that when you, and, and I, I don't want you to take this as a backhanded because I like doing them with you, but when it's that perfect, you're like, I'm just not going to play. Totally. You know what I mean? Yes. You're just like, absolutely. Oh, no. It's just, I can't be in this orgy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's like, like, I, 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 I play like pretty good acoustic guitar. Yeah. And he is like a yeah. concert technician. Yeah, yeah he's Beethoven. Yeah, yeah, yeah And exactly. we're white dudes at a party that are like, you guys <laughs> yeah, like Oasis? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Facts, facts, <laughs> facts. Um, well, get out of here. Oh, the okay. last question is, this is for you, by the way. You didn't drink it. That's your oh. magic mind. Oh, amazing. Thank You're you. You're going to love it. Okay. And this is new. This is Modern Mammals. <gasps> it's my favorite shampoo. It's incredible. Beautiful. Thank it's you shampoo. so much. I wash my hair today. Does it look like I washed my hair today? This isn't a commercial. I'm just really excited about this. I'm giving it to all my friends. I'm like, like my hair's thinning. That's my store. I'm a hat guy. Oh, so you're going I'm full so hat. So bad at like. Why well, your hair type isn't necessarily my hair type, is it? All I've been hearing all day is we're the same, so I don't know. 
That's facts. <laughs> Can you float a bottle cap in your pubes? I'm just kidding. I'm just, uh, you'll still like it because uh, you have to wash your hair. And it's. I, I love washing in my your hair. I love, but in terms of your question of does it look like I shampooed my hair? Yeah. You could show me five pictures and be like, two Which have one? and two haven't. And I'll be like, no clue. Yeah. But when I wash my hair, it's ruined. In what way? And that it's it becomes dry, stringy puffy, and dry. It's and, like oh, out, of, out of control. I'll, okay. If, when I would wash my hair, I'd literally take olive oil and put it in my hair just to give it something. Really? To Interesting. To weigh it down. Oh. And now, it's like almost like a dry shampoo. Now it you just sounds great like a head commercial. Of hair. Thanks, man. Envy that. But okay. modern males. And my pubes. Thank you. you can put a you bottle good, cap in it. And you just put it, and you don't manscape or anything. When I was single, I would give a little trim. Okay. Just a little trim, because there would be like one wayward yeah, pube, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, like a Tim Burton movie, yes, like yeah. a branch on yeah, a Tim yeah, Burton yeah. movie, uncurling, like, <laughs> <laughs> just uncurling as your pubic lice walk down off of it. <laughs> oh my god, doing jumps. <laughs> <laughs> the young lady's like, should there be lice uh, doing jumps? Off it's your art. <laughs> I showered today, and you haven't said anything about it. It's clean. <laughs> it's clean. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me the time you laugh the hardest in your life? That's that's all I can. Ooh, in my whole life. Or or to take the pressure we, off. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be number one, but if you got it, you got it. You know, I, uh, I've been very blessed with hard laughs. Yeah. You know, uh, seeing the South Park movie in Great. the theaters, yeah. really, really hard, like in the aisle Uncle going, Fucker. oh my God, Uncle Fuck, like mind blown. The hardest that I laugh consistently is if I'll do a game night with like my college friends, we play a game called Loaded Questions. We're not even friends yet, and I'm like, why do they? Why did they? Yeah, but how? I feel like we're yeah, Raphael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, done, done, done. What do you play? Um, loaded Questions, and oh. the the, sim the simple way it's designed to be played is like n name five things that are like what's a fruit that's purple, right? Uh, or, or or what? No, sorry. What's your favorite fruit? I'm thinking of a different game. What's your favorite fruit? And you write down the answer and someone says banana and, and, and the person who asked the question doesn't answer. I hand oh. all the answers to you. You tell me the answers and I go, okay, Pete's uh, orange, Katie's yeah. grape and the thing. That's we, like, um, you ever played Dixit? No. It's the greatest game of all time. Similar oh. mechanism. Okay. It's all guessing who do you think uh, oh. would have said this as oh, their answer. Oh, funny. Okay. And those are the best games. Because you're playing yes. the person instead of the game. But do you like, write the answers in Dixit? You're putting... Dixit is incredible. And okay. I'm not being paid to say it. <laughs> it's, it's somebody... Uh, you have five cards, and they're all like oil paintings. Okay. And they're very abstract. They're like dreams. Yes. And let's you want to give a clue that's obvious but not too obvious. So let's say mine is like a, a boy in a dunce cap, uh, okay. and he's fishing in a toilet. Yes. I might say like... Worst day ever. Okay, okay, And fine. then I put that down. And now you have five cards. Now you want to pick one that would be worst day ever. Let's say you have a dragon and and he's trying to light a cigarette, but he, he only smoke is coming out. Okay. You would put that down. Okay. And maybe you have one that you don't have. But the fun comes when you're guessing. Who, yes. Who do you think said this? Who do you think is the original card? You're all trying to guess who, what the original card was. You're trying to find my card. Interesting. So you want to get people to guess your card. So okay. you want to guess right. Okay. But if, you're, if your wife plays with you, yes. you'll know her answers better than you'll know mine. Yes. Because you'll yes. be like, I think you would think this. Because yeah. you're a people person and, and the, nobody showed up to your birthday party. That's the worst day ever. Yes. So it's like that. Fantastic I game. I love it. Tell me about this one. Loaded questions is uh, the one place Fruits. you wouldn't want to go on vacation. Yes. And everybody writes down right. wherever it is. And the way you're supposed to play is like, you wouldn't want to go on vacation, like Death Valley or whatever, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But the way my friends and I play is it's really like an improv show where people build like, like a, a you know, it gets so inappropriate and so offensive <laughs> and it's so blue and it gets, you know, uh, sl sl like... Sloppy, gushy, uh, fat balls covered in shit mud. That do the, you know, like, like, just like the most juvenile shit base. Mud. It's a sixty forty blend <laughs> of shit exactly. and wet dirt. It's a little yeah. sticky. Yeah, um, you know which parts are and shit. The, but the fun of it is like not even the most base or offensive things. It's just like, like there was a word two months ago, like gushy. Just like gushy tickled us so funny Very that good. you'd be like, you know. Because sometimes then you then you reverse engineer it and it's like the, your favorite board game to play 
like gushy monopoly, you know, and it's not, and it just, <laughs> but it's just, it just builds over time to yes. where the answers are just absolute nonsense that yes. have nothing to do with the question. Yes. And we're just trying to make each other laugh. And that's, that's where I laugh the hardest. I love it. And no specific one. I, I, I just don't want to end the story. If you had the, I have no, you know, no good matter. line. No, it, yeah. I'm with you. And believe it or not, I play meaning, believe it or not, meaning <laughs> I don't know what I mean. I have two choices, I guess. Oh yeah, you have two choices. Yeah. I just mean like oh. it's so fun. I play with my in-laws, and that's not classically like a truly organic In game. easy hang. It's, yes, it's, it's, but yes. it's such a fun game cool. that you actually can like just draw. And we, I've given so much shit to my in-laws because they know each other. Val's parents will get it, and I'm like, how is a kitten reading the newspaper? Yeah, another day, another dollar. <laughs> When yeah, yeah, mine yeah. was literally a guy with a briefcase walking into a bank. The day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. why wouldn't you pick mine? And, yes. and it just drives you insane. Amazing. Uh, but deeply fun. fun. Well, Taryn, if I ever want to do it's another deep. podcast, it'll be with you. Great. I'm in. <laughs> and I'm in. depending on how long the strike is, maybe you you'll maybe hear from do, me. Yeah. I'll hear from you in September. What do you think? Yeah, August? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when does the pile diminish? Yeah. Uh, we go 50 yeah, 50. Yeah, yeah. What would it be about? We can't, it can't just be pop culture, but yeah. It'll, it'll be called Same okay. Guy. Same Guy. Same Guy. Yeah. With Pete and Taryn. Yeah. Or Taryn and Pete, depending on how good your lawyers Samesies? are. Samesies? Samesies is nice. Samesies. Samesies? Yeah, the Samesies podcast. Yeah. And we call our fans um, Samos. Samos. John Samos. John Samos. <laughs> oh, my John To all the John, John and the Jane Johnny Samos, Samos out there. there. <laughs> and we just say Because, I mean, like, f we're, we have strikingly similar uh, yeah. pasts. And yes. I'm a little bit older than you, right? I mean, I'm 44. You're... Yeah. You were a senior. I was a freshman. But still, same experio. Yeah. So... Yeah. Same points of reference, but same... Things that that we were taken by, that's or right. That we're inspired by, and and continue to enjoy. La, uh, last thing I'll say is mm. uh, the never ending story. I put it on. I think I was stoned, and it's just the stone eater eating stone. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? In my memory, it opens with the longest, most meandering. Like this was, we were all on LSD when we made this movie. It's not a good movie. You remember Falcor and the guys with the laser eyes? Of course, yes. Apparently, that's like two hours deep because there's a lot of the guys with the laser eyes are also like topless women statues. Oh, that right. Made me feel like uh, I, I did, yeah, where sh to look. I shouldn't look anywhere at these statues. I'll throw in the woman, the Shih Tzu that uh, Jim Carrey saves, and the woman with the big bosoms, oh, yeah, also yeah, naked yeah. gun when he's on nice the rack. ledge and he grabs the boobies. Yeah, comedy boobs yes. are the only boobs I knew. Right, and they Same, were yes for a long time deeply. Yes. To this day, I'll still be like, Ooh. like it's, <laughs> it's so fucking weird. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like that. It's like, ah. well, you said airplane earlier. Airplane, Revenge of the Nerds, which yeah, is yeah. just uh, yeah. not doesn't age well. But uh, yes, yeah. airplane when the boobs go by. Yeah. Anyway, all right, samezies. All right, same coming Z's. soon <laughs> to whomever you get your podcasts. <laughs> on samezies, we'll always close by saying we're the samezies, but on this one, we say keep it crispy. I just point because it's written over your shoulder. Love Would it. you say keep it crispy? And you don't have to say it as Brad Pitt, but you sure could. Folks, keep it crispy. Uh. <laughs> it's fucking. Now, do one is you. Okay. Keep it crispy. It was just, <laughs> it was just everything. <laughs> it was just Christmas. Thank okay. you so much. You